I did to throw on a bit of double dash today. Really? Yeah. Did you hear that game? It's pretty neat. I I think I might have heard about it. I think I read I, I think I read a couple of reviews were talking that it's like, yeah, it's a pretty neat game called Mario Kart Double Dash, the first entry in this new spin-off series. Yeah, because they eventually some weirdos made some N64 console or whatever and they tried to have a bunch of knockoff games. Like Right. And, and I can't believe they got away for it with it for so long. They were shut I down mean, eventually. Wow. There's just some justice in the world. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they tried to pretend as though they came first. It's really embarrassing. You know how they did it? By having I, I worse like, graphics. Like, what, how does... I, I feel like... Wasn't there... There was another one right on the SNES where they tried to, like... That was trying to gun for the style of Double Dash, right? And, it, like, I think so? Um... I, I don't even know if that console was real. I think it might have been a made up. I, 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 mm, well, like a collective, a collective uh, d delusion. I know the company the tried FD. to like gain a lot of prestige from from having claimed to be so influential, and it's just like a collective I mean, lie. Yeah. The entertainment system, and then the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Like, yeah, man, the, the was, was uh, he wasn't working that hard that day, was he? Well, some Reddit users fell for that being a real thing, but uh. I certainly cool. didn't. Um, oh, look at that. Chat's already pouring in. Hello, folks. Oh, hooray. Hi. All right, the plan here is to continue and complete the uh, the Halo Super Chats we had. Then oh, boy. we be uh, sorting out one of our other catch-ups, Streamlabs, and then today's ones. So I wouldn't promise we're going to get through all of that today. We may, we may not. It depends on... Everything goes. Us plans. Um. First one says, first time in almost two years I managed to catch an EFAP. Well. Oh. Yeah. Well, we're glad that you're still here. I hope you enjoyed it. Mhm. Mm they can be uh, they can be elusive. Those FAPs. What's going on with them? Good to see him active fat. again. Give my five dollars to ER to ensure more milk trips are successful. Milk trips. You are a, a milk of his, you know? He's just an enjoyer of milk. Does he like to do the milking himself? Is he a, a hands-on kind of milk acquirer? I assume he's a hands-on milker from what we've talked with Yara about. That kind of way. Does he just lean down and squirt it straight into his mouth? No, I'm sure he's like, all right, I'll this. be back later when I'm thirsty again. I'm sure he's like Luke. Shows up. Hey, girl. Before anyone says there it, you go. Bungie always had an internal conflict if humans were forerunners or not, and changed throughout the games. It wasn't a 343 change. I mean, it absolutely was. Like, 343 was the one that explicitly, like, in the direct cutscenes, said that they were different. Also, I, mean, um, I know that. If we pretend for a second that that is true, that they had conflict over it, the person who defines it that way is still at fault <laughs> if it causes con contradiction. Do you know what I mean? Like, if yeah. we discuss the idea but never actually commit to it, and then someone else does, like, well, they committed to it, so. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah exactly. Because... Discuss all kinds of... Most of the things that you have in your game, you have this... Well, sorry, all the things that are in the game, but just a tiny fraction of the things that you've discussed. Only one thing's gonna make it to the game. I think, you, um... You discuss dozens of things. I think what it would be worth pointing out is whether or not Bungie went back and forth, what we have in those games essentially is humans have some sort of connection to the Forerunners, whether that be because they are them or the descendants of them, uh, or if they were chosen, doesn't really matter because it's never like explicitly addressed. Um, but then again, like, Guilty Spark literally calls Chief a Forerunner, so I don't know what I'm meant to make of that other than... <laughs> That that's that's I don't know why a monitor would say that, um, unless that was true. Um, and I mean it, it's it's just you because the problem is with with the three four three it's not just the fact that they drew the distinction it's many things that they did, uh, including that chief was essentially the chosen one like that for th they did a set of circumstances that would create master chief. It's like, how is this not way worse than that? And he was a person who could do it. 
like many other people. Could have been anybody else, but it was him. Hmm. When you talk about coincidence, it could have been anybody else, but it was him. There's like a much better way to go, I would say, generally than... Nah, you were, you were cultivated over thousands of years and thousands of generations. Like, yeah, I don't know. You, you feel like you just create problems when you do that. Like, problems that become very difficult to solve. Uh, these people won't stop until they've sacked every beloved franchise. You hate to see it, Molafia. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I was, uh, I stopped. Yeah? Well, just the... It's not necessarily their goal in any way, shape, or form, because they want to make money, but, um... They've gotten really bad at doing that. Well, it seems that way. Um... I was- I started my playthrough of Halo 1 yesterday, and it's like, man, that was like a really cool idea... ...for a game. It's so neat. A novel. Um... And it's- it's pretty crazy to me playing that game. It's like, man, how little of, like, this... ...is, like, in that show. Like, how little of the tone and atmosphere. Hmm. Of, uh, yeah, because it's like people. I think I think like I don't know how involved three four three are, but I mean I kind of feel this way. If it was like it's been forgotten, like what Halo was for a long time, you know, like what it used to be in terms of its tone. Um, it's it's it was that that game has got so much like camp and levity to it, despite like you know the serious stakes of the story. All the Marines running around saying funny things. Um, Cortana's like really snarky sort of. Uh, like comebacks and observations there's a there's a, certainly it feels like those games knew how to sort of like unwind a bit you know but i also like, yeah replayed yeah. halo the other day i sat down and went through it the first game and i'm working through halo 2 now and you're there is that aspect of oh wow like this is in the game like this was a thing that's always been here and sometimes you just don't remember these sorts of things yeah. or you know years go by and you forget what's in it but there's yeah. so much there in terms of just character and cool places I mean, and nifty lines there's a lot of i i think because i mean it's 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 an often praised part of halo one but like halo one's atmosphere is fucking fantastic like just when you first step out onto the ring the presence of the ring like everywhere all of these beautiful landscapes but like mixed with this at the time like strange alien architecture is it's such a great like setting for a video game and uh, there's no way that this show is going to capture like that when they go to halo they're probably only going to spend a couple episodes there and it's it's not going to be that interesting well yeah we yeah have it's a clue what they'll end up doing what they'll end up wasting well, uh... yeah did they ever explain why Chief and Maquis had a special connection to objects? I must have missed it. Yeah, they have a protein in their DNA that's like two in a billion odds that um, is the thing that seems to allow them to, to interact with the yeah, Forerunner stuff. which is stuff. one of the changes that we talked about that then generates a shit ton of contrivances because you've made that change. Yeah, the change is substantial because in the games it could have just been anybody. It didn't need to be Chief, but in the show it has to be Chief and it's like, man... The fact that the Master Chief is the one person who has the protein, and also that this one person with the protein on two separate occasions interacted with two complementary pieces of Forerunner technology. It's like, the odds of that are insane bordering on a... I mean, I'm, I'm happy to call that a plot hole, basically. That's an insane co coincidence. Yeah, like, it's a... It, it is an insane coincidence. Like, statistically, like what, one in a trillion? If we're yeah, being it, doesn't, real. it doesn't beat out Multiverse of Madness's <laughs> drivers. It does. Yeah, I that's the it. top. I don't think you could. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying. It, it might be like the worst math, like it, without going into absurdity Infinity. of multiverses. It's it's up there for most incredible coincidences yeah. ever well, in a um, plot. If we go to that level, it would we would have the um remember the Doctor Who one that Jay highlights, which is the uh. They are teleported to a random place in space, and they happen to be right next to a ship that can rescue them. Yeah, that's, uh... Incredible. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. It's just... Which I guess that's is funny, true. because, again, you look... Halo 1 starts with a coincidence. Your slip space jump brought you to Halo. It's like, that's the coincidence. The inciting incident for the story. It's like, we've talked about that, though. An inciting incident can be a coincidence, because it doesn't really... 
I mean, and in this case, it doesn't really bail you out, right? Like, man, what what luck that we found a super weapon that could kill all of us that the Covenant really want to use because it's part of their religion, and also it's filled with a crazy um, parasite that'll kill everything if it gets off. It's like it's not it's not a coincidence that helps you, you know, that you found this. It's a coincidence that just kicks off yeah, the would... story and. Then and side instances yeah. are often like just what if scenarios and then the rest yeah. happens like so you describe the whole war happening mm -hmm. and then you're like what if the humans stumbled across the halo well exactly because you do have the backdrop of this war that's been going on reach has fallen humanity is desperate and then they happen to find that someone can be like well that's lucky it's like well it's not lucky i mean given that given that um i mean it's it's lucky in the in the vast cosmos but given that it's established in the Halo world that, like, when you escape a, a planet that's being besieged, you just make random jumps. It's like, well, it was gonna happen. It, it, it wasn't like they went there on purpose. You do random jumps to try and escape, and then it just so happens that this one ship jumps to this location. Um, and then that kicks off the story. As opposed to, man... Like, I don't know, Chief just went to Madrigal to, for some reason. I don't even know why he went there. Um, it's just kind of crazy how, like, a little video game from 2001 put more effort into explaining why things happened. Than and it's it. still quite a gamey game. It's, it's a very, very gamey game. I mean, I, I've it never is. understood the weird Twitter attitude where they're like, you know, film bros have ruined film like Cinema Sins, that myself will be mentioned a lot. This is like obsessed with plot and that's what's ruining films now and it's just like we haven't been obsessed with, with plot in any way shape or form for ages like it feels like you have to dig back to the 90s and 2000s for where it was starting to die out where we're at now like nobody cares about making things make sense nobody... no it's about hitting you beats that you want but i mean it's instead of just like because i mean again in halo one our introduction is uh, all I need to know is, like, did they, like, find us or did they follow us? Cortana's like, well, I think we both know the answer to that. And then they talk about Covenant ships are faster. They're waiting on the far side of the planet. They knew that we were coming here because nobody can ignore the hole we tore in slip space. It's like, you didn't need to tell me why the aliens found you, but you did. Because mm -hmm. you're establishing aspects of the world building that are important. Covenant ships are faster than us. They outnumber us. Like, we're on the ropes. Um... We need to make sure that they don't find Earth, and it's like, okay, but we can't let Cortana fall into enemy hands because she has tons of intel that they could use against us. I'm going to set up subroutines to help the ship navigate down, um, but I, you know, you're probably going to ignore me. It's like, yeah, you, this is this is all. You only need a couple of lines, but you just establish a bunch of important rules about the way things work. Cortana is very powerful and has like a huge amount of things that she can do, but Keys is going to do a lot of things on his own because that's the kind of person he is. Yeah, um, that's in my little the note kind of the notes I've scribbled down as I play the game. Like uh, Keys mm -hmm. has a personality and he does things and da 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 da, all that stuff. Yeah, Keys is um well I mean, and also just again once again struck by how much um focus there is on you being there with other Marines and you're not doing it on your own. Um. I mean, damn, the, the second mission of the game, like, the, 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 the mission that is the titular name of the whole series is about you rescuing Marines who get stranded all over the place and attacked by the Covenant. You'd think, based on the show, that the Spartans never really save anyone. Yeah, <laughs> there's multiple instances of... Certainly, both Cortana and uh, Chief have this interest in the well-being of Marines throughout the wow. game. Uh, the yeah, first the game when you're descending to the planet it's like oh we're we gonna be okay sir like i don't want to die and then chief just pats him on the shoulder it's like yeah i don't know i you guys didn't play the game though so i guess you didn't know <laughs> like like chief cares about people uh, it's an adaptation it's fine it's, yeah the it's both of them you made, the both of them do yeah but but it's fine it's adaptation all right you, you yeah you've made your own choice it was, it was a much better choice for sure such a great idea we chose to adapt uh, Halo by removing all of its good aspects and replacing it with these horrific alternatives. And again, you could have made all of these changes, but you weren't thoughtful enough to think about the consequences of a lot of the changes that you made. So, it's just, yeah. It's it's okay, it's an adaptation. It sucks on its own terms. <laughs> just stings a bit. It's obvious why the Covenant are returning humans. They want their money back, and they have receipts. Haven't you ever shopped at Walmart? Gosh, they're only being smart shoppers. Also, hi, ER. 
in this world with with humans being as dumb as they are, I can believe the Covenant want their money back. Yeah. Uh, Halo Pump and Dump Edition. Oh boy. Would any of Iron Man's suits be possible in Halo's universe? Um, probably not. Well, there's there's much more of a focus on like utilitarianism in like the Halo universe, especially with like UNSC stuff. So like they've got jetpacks and things, but um, no, nothing, nothing. But it's like, like a jetpack that you have on your back. On and your it's, back. Yeah. It's a bit more believable than Iron Man. Well, yeah, it's it's more um cumbersome in a sense. It's it goes up and down, and that's basically it. You can't do crazy flying around. Maybe, well, then again, Halo 5 had the Spartans do, like, the crazy Spartan abilities with thrusters in there, which is, I get, a bit close to, like, Iron Man stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But no, not really. Spartan armor is pretty good, but you can't go flying around in it. It's heavy, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, when I saw your Halo video show up in my YouTube feed, I actually cheered. Love all your videos. You're truly one in a million. Also, hi, Rex. Hello. I think you'd appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, don't know if you guys will do Jurassic World Dominion, but if you want, I could tell you all the BS in that film since I'm a paleontologist, especially since you share many of my concerns with it. Oof, it's going to be a tough one to fit in at this point, Dominion, uh, when I look at my schedule for the coming months. Uh, uh, but I, I would like to cover it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do it on time or like quickly. Which I think is a reality I just have to get used to. Like, there are just some projects, if I don't... If I keep moving between ones, then none get finished, and then it's just like a nightmare. So I just have to be like, well, this is one I just have to have a later or not at all. I saw a... I read a post that was like, I'm still waiting for them to come in Moon Knight. Like, with this ad face, I'm just like, oh, I don't get there, but it may be pushed back even further. Don't get there. Sure of it know how it goes. You know how this, the, the, the flumes outflame the, the correct mm -hmm. period. <laughs> Hoping to say I skipped this show as I wanted to be nowhere near it and it seems like I made the right choice. Well, certainly yeah. if you like Halo. But then yeah. if you like storytelling, this, yeah, you should probably avoid it. Mm -hmm. Um, Don't tase me, brethren. Well, you would say bro because... Uh, Going to the humans at that point. Mm -hmm. I feel sorry for Halo fans. The show looks downright disrespectful towards the original material. Oh, it totally is. Yeah, it's, it is. Um, yeah. The added bonus of it being disrespectful to itself, too. Rare W. Uh, rare L, actually. Oh, but L. <laughs> yeah. But you, you can. Well, I say rare. It's not rare at all these days. It's happening a lot, and you probably should get used to it. I mean, is there any reason to think, like, the Bioshock show, or, like, Fallout show, or. Hey, Last of Us, God of War, there's so many coming out. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I don't know, man. Like, I'm not... kind of sucks as well, because if you told me, like, ten years ago, there's going to be a whole, like, raft of video game adaptations that are, like, actually going to have money behind them and, like, A-list talent and really great actors. It's like, oh, that's cool as fuck. Like, who's writing them? <laughs> and then you fuck yeah. <laughs> it's like, Some oh, losers. No. Um, could you please update the EFAP playlist? It stops at 149. I finally caught up, but finding it hard to track down the rest. How could it possibly be hard to track down the rest? Oh, like, like, so one, on, uh, 150. Like, wow, well, you can just type in them. Yeah, it does Granted, I, mean, I should update that playlist, and I will, but like, please don't tell me it's hard to find. You type the number, and then <laughs> it's so easy. I'll do it, I swear. Uh, Kia Aura from all of New, Z New Zealand? Does that make any sense to you guys? Maybe that's a greeting or something. Oh, maybe it is. If like it is, hello. Hello. Don't wait for the Bioshock show to subtly include all of Elizabeth's rat cons to Rapture. Please don't remind. <laughs> that's me. Uh... uh. Silco's criminal organization was pretty competent. It was okay. Um, obviously, it was like starting to fall apart to the point of him getting uh, almost assassinated or executed, I guess you should say. Uh, but he held it for many years. 
And uh, you could argue that's because of the fact that he had that relationship with Marcus. And he was manipulating the entire planes to his benefit with the drugs he was pumping in to prepare them for a war that was, he was going to foster. Like, there's lots there that, that I think you can argue that even if flaws considered, some of them were deliberate on his part of an organization. But it was still pretty ragtag. Like, as Jace points out, he would have fucking annihilated them if they were to actually have a fight. Mm -hmm. X-Tech beats... Um, fuck, what's the drug called again? The... Shimmer? Yeah, Shimmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was doubting myself there for a second. It's yeah. Psyche. Somehow, ER returned. Yeah. Oh. Look, I'll excuse IRL bad writing when it makes me happier. Also, love to see Ackman and John Halo back. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. uh, and play DDLC, Dumbos. Perhaps. The chat. Maybe. Maybe. Oh yeah, we're supposed to feel bad for the literal species traitor for getting roughed up a bit. Um, well, it's just kills a lot of people. Like that's the thing that's yeah, really. Yeah, be fair. Uh, I would fucking betray my species if they were worth betraying. <laughs> but like, not in this scenario. Yeah, she's just killing people, and she has kind of no conviction. She just flip flops like very quickly. Like uh, I don't. Even, I would because if she legitimately believes in the great journey, why would she ever help like Chief? Like, ever. Why, why would she help him? He fall, fell in love. Yeah. It was really sweet and well written. Um, you spent two days with someone and then you don't believe in your entire, like, faith belief system anymore. It's just gone. I, I, I'm He's also, that incredible. Uh, like, blown away, I guess, by the fact that they really wanted to try and argue. Like, you see, it's a tough decision for, he, for her about humanity because yeah. on one hand they're nice, but on the other they're not. And it's like, wow. Meanwhile. Meanwhile, it's like, what's the Covenant's goal? Oh, to just kill all humans. Like, just kill them all. It's like, yeah, you know what? That's that's pretty fine with me. The Covenant, they got good and bad. You know, they, they make great <laughs> lasagna. They kill every, all humans. Like, yeah. Uh. Um, Avengers 1 is the best MCU film. Would you agree? Nah. It's, it's, I, up, there. it's up there, though. Well, so instead of saying nah, I would just say I would be willing to entertain the argument. Um, oh, for sure, yeah. I just it's, think there are other ones that are stronger, but it's up there. Uh, there's a couple that I think can, can compete, um, and I, I guess, but like my pick right now would be Civil War, but I could see it changing if, uh, if I were given mm -hmm. a reason to do so. This is the thing, I've never done a huge deep dive into Avengers's sort of story. I've only done a few scenes, so it's just like, maybe I would be convinced after looking into it for a while of like, and there's a shit ton going on here that's really good, or vice versa, I don't know. Um, I can't be the only one that feels this show represented PS3's resistance fall of man more than Halo. Uh, I, I would say that I don't agree with that. Um, I don't, no, I don't agree with that. Uh, I'm not even sure why, why. huh. That the Halo show is more emblematic of Resistance Fall of Man. What is like, what, like the Chief is more like Hale? Nathan Hale? Because I don't see that. I, I guess. I, no, I, I don't see that one at all. I played um, that game for about half an hour once, and so I got nothing to add to this. Well, it's just because the premise of Resistance Fall of Man is that the Chim Chimera is like this sort of alien force that is comprised of like converted humans. Um, like 1950s, so it's got like this kind of cool fusion of this crazy science fiction technology with this kind of alternate history like 1940s 50s uh, like equipment vehicles but i mean in terms of like the story comparison i don't see it at all hmm. oh sneaky second play Apparently after episode 2 or 3 aired, Paramount wanted to fire the entire writing staff that worked on season 1. This was after 7 to 8 years of development hell, destroying a season's worth of sets. Wait, is this... they wanted to fire the writing staff after... I mean, I, I'm just three. confused. Is that because of people's reaction to it, or because they saw it for the first time and went ew? Because, yeah, I mean, at that point, there's nothing that can be done. You probably should have reviewed those things. Exactly. I, <laughs> man, <laughs> like, why is everyone so if bad at making true. shows now? If that's true. If that's true. I mean, then again, like, both of the showrunners left 
though. Yeah. Like, like I, that doesn't bode well when one of them leaves halfway through, one of them leaves before season one even airs. You often wonder like, sometimes when people leave, is it that they were asked to leave sometimes? Well, I mean, yeah, there's there's that. I guess it's just that the, the options are either they were asked to leave, which isn't a great sign, or they don't want to keep doing it, which is odd, considering mm. that it's show running for Halo, you know? Like, how is that not one well, of like, the best jobs you can get? With everything that can be understood about Halo, right? If it turned out you were the head writer on the Halo show and it is as it is, I'd be like, yeah, he didn't get to do much of anything, did he? <laughs> like, he didn't get to have any decisions about any of this. I would, if I if I was making the Halo show, I would have probably gone with a radically different premise. Well, um, what I'm suggesting is, like, your involvement would imply not at all what we saw, therefore you're just superfluous to the production, I would assume, at that point. And so if I, you left well, for season so. two... It wouldn't be like, oh no, why would you abandon it? It's probably like, no, I was never a part of it. it right, yeah, kind of like, well, it's kind of like with Multiverse of Madness, right? How much did Sam Raimi meaningfully get to uh, make decisions about the plot and everything? Yeah. Versus Michael Waldron, it's like, well, you wrote Loki, so, like, <laughs> you know, I, like, mm -hmm. I could see the through line there. Uh, fucking hell, that luck, damn. Also, I lost my whole lead now. That's pretty unfortunate. Um, the director in charge, the art director in charge, refused to travel to Budapest to work on location, so they fired him and rebuilt everything. 343 had to sign off on all this cannon breaking stuff, by the way. It's in the contract. Oh. Really? Well, if presumably. You are listening to uh, this now, person who said that. If you would, like, ping me in Discord or something with a link to that, I would be interested to see it. I thought uh, 343 didn't have much say at all on what happened, that like the showrunners well, had a lot, a lot of freedom. Maybe that's true, that they did have to sign in order for all of this to go ahead, but in the same vein as like, you guys want this to go forward? You want your money? Well, sign the contract or nothing happens, sort of thing. Yeah, Whereas, that's like, what I mean. I guess we have to sign it, like in terms of if we want. Mm-hmm. Uh, first half of the show was Robocop gaining his humanity back after a program designed to rob him of it. Plugs him into a device and regains his memory. Yes, you could say that. Except Robocop is... Rob, Robocop. <laughs> Robocop is compelling. Oh, yeah. I suppose it follows a form of an archetype. Um, I mean, I guess I would say that... I don't know that, like, I find that... Chiefs one is nearly as meaningful as somebody who was turned into a robot, you know, like an actual robot. Because, like, those pellets don't do anything, clearly. <laughs> I would like... just say the pellets are confusing as fuck as to what they actually yeah. do. Didn't want to commit, I don't think, because then it leaves it wibbly right. wobbly enough for different things to happen that they will. Well, it means that Vanek and Riz kill Chief in episode 8 with their fight scene. Like, that's yeah. it. It's over. You know the writing is really shit when it makes you long for the good old storytelling of Halo 5. Nah, oh, man. Or, oh, nah, Halo 5 is, like, pretty incompetent, like... Which is worse, though. Oh, well, yeah, surely Halo 5 is gonna be more worse for you in terms of damage because it's well, actually Halo part of continuity. Yeah. yeah, Halo 5 is canon. This show just is... It's, it's frustrating, but it's not... Like, I think it's worth noting, like, Halo 5 has some of the worst dialogue writing. I think I'm... Like, it's, um... It's really bad. The dialogue. Everybody says exactly what they mean. There's so much exposition. And there's like no character seeping through at all. Um, and the plot itself, there's like so many parts that are just missing. Then again, I mean, I did say that I thought the show was like a two, so it, it would have to be worse than that. And I don't, yeah, it's hard to say. It gets hard when you compare those, because it's like they're deficient in different ways. Yeah. I need to know. It has been established that Rags is pretending to be a dog while still being a dog, so is he an anthro dog pretending to be a real dog? I must know. Madness. Madness. I am a real dog. I have... It's, it's just clear. I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, there's a live It's always been this right way there. since day one. Uh, the Halo show reminds me of the new Mortal Kombat movie, a product so disrespectful to the source material and relies on your knowledge of the games for you to understand even the most basic stuff. Nah, Mortal Kombat's better than, like... It's not good, well, I, I mean, agree, but... The funny thing is, me and Fringy have a pretty decent familiarity with Mortal Kombat. Certainly between decent us. Um, 
And so, the fact that, like, it just fucks around and does whatever in that movie and we didn't even comment on its accuracy to the source, it's like, do you want to know why? Because Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat as a source isn't great. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's fun, but it's not like, yeah. it's not, you know, like, I don't know what kind that of great be... story indicative of, of why we talked about it with Halo. It's like, you get a good story, maybe even a great story, and then you adapt it, and you take only pieces and destroy everything. Meanwhile, Mortal Kombat's like, okay, we'll take your characters and we'll just tell our own story uh, with their powers. And to a level, the, the spirit of Mortal Kombat is still kind of there a little bit. Not not entirely, for sure. Like, yeah, and like, you still got it still ends up making people. more sense than the Halo show did. It probably does. It has much simpler variables at play. It doesn't do well with them, but it probably does better. Yeah, less um, perversion and squandering from what I can tell. Yeah. Uh, but... And maybe the second one will be better because like, you, you get the impression that that one was less afraid to lean into the games than like older... Yeah. There's a great irony in that if, if the Halo show had just embraced full freedom and didn't look at anything in the games, Maybe it would have ended up being better. Like, it didn't it rely on any yeah. reference from the games because it ends up dragging things in that it doesn't understand. But the problem is that you can't really market a Halo show effectively if you don't have Spartans in their armor and Covenant ships Yeah, of course, they knew that. They knew that if they're going to make a Halo show, they have to have the iconography. Otherwise, what the fuck's the point? They're not going to be able to get the fans in. Everybody, yeah, everybody will sort of be like, ah, uh, hmm. Like, if no, it was thanks. called, you know, the Halo series and it's like, the fucking Fantastic Beast trailer. It would be like, what? what? <laughs> It'd be very confusing. But uh, I am waiting for the first person to, to do that. The first person to have the balls to admit it. They just wanted to tell their own story. That'd be nice, high. yeah. I think the closest we've gotten to that is Hill House. Yeah, which I guess I appreciate that honesty. Uh... The thing I loved about ODST are the recordings following a civilian across New Mombasa showing humanity's desperation in the Covenant attacks on Earth. Yeah, that was a great idea. It was like a little side plot. Ringy, the word you were looking for is sapient. Most animals are sentient, few are sapient. The words are often confused, but it's a pet peeve of mine. Uh... So that is correct. Sapient and sentient. And sentient uh, yeah, that yeah. does seem to be right. I, I don't means... remember you using it wrong, though. Because uh, I, I thought what you were talking about when you brought that word up before was just the fact that we should be... Remember, uh, we were talking about um, humanity being detected via compassion, and then it was like, dogs uh, have compassion. And it's like, well, dogs are sentient. Like, we, we shouldn't just... Like, that's reason enough not to consider them some kind of, like, what, worthless yeah, I think... entity or something. I think the point I was making is that... Well, so the reality is the elites are both sentient and... Well, pens, right? It depends on what they do with them. But, like, if they're going to pull from them, like, what... If they're going to have the Arbiter as a POV character, then it's almost certain in this universe that it's the same as in the games, that the elites are both sentient and sapient. And the point I was making is, like, I don't know that humanity would have unique qualities if, like, other... If other alien species were able to achieve a lot of the same things, I feel like it would just be... They would have to have a lot of the same attributes. I just don't like, um... I don't like stories like that a guy like humans are super duper special, like, as I just believe that it would not be true. Also, uh, yeah, correct I mean, me if I'm wrong, but I yeah. thought sapiens would uh, require sentience. Uh, I think so, right? First, like, you can't be, because sentience means the ability to feel or perceive things. Um, I don't know how you could have, like, any wisdom without the capacity to feel or sense things, you know? Right, yeah. So it seems like, yeah, it's, it's, sentience comes first, and then sapience is like the next step up from that. Also, someone said Fringy and Muller are both wrong about the movie keeping the spirit of M MK. I mean, this is both wrong about the games keeping the spirit of MK? Hang on. Like, which, what games uh, have we even I, talked about? I think I said that there's this, in a certain sense, that the film, like, retains some of the spirit of, of the games. That was something I said, which well, I like the, kind the, of... The problem is, though, I've always kind of hated and, and, and used that argument for different things, because the spirit of is kind of wishy-washy, isn't it? It's vague. 
It is vague. Like, who did, who gets to decide what the spirit of a thing is? If Because if someone said, like, the spirit of Peter Parker is with great power comes great responsibility, I'd be like, I think that's fair. But then someone else could be like, whoa, it's way more than that. It involves, like, his struggles with money. It involves uh, the fact that his uh, uncle has to fucking die. You know, just stuff like the spirit is really important to nail with these elements, too. And you're just like, oh, okay. I guess that's that may be considered fair, too. Is You know, but as for Mortal Kombat... I just haven't taken it seriously as a piece of storytelling ever. I, I, it's I'm just sorry. a world, crazy it's, it's, characters. Yeah, like, I remember Shaolin Monks, um... I don't even know if you- did you ever play Shaolin Monks? I, no, I didn't play that one. It might be my favorite, especially as a co-op game, but man, the story is so fucking bad and funny. That's, that's the one where sometimes Scorpion, when he uses his, uh, his thing, he's like, Get, get over here, bitch! Like, Oh, I'm pretty, one, I thought right? he says, um, sometimes he'll say, get the fuck over here. Yeah, he, he does say that too, but one of the other variations was, get over here, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like, really funny. I, I don't like that they changed the, because, um, they used the, the same get over here voice line for, like, 15 years. Uh, and then in Mortal Kombat 11, they, they re-recorded it, and it's not as cool. He's like, get over here, it's like, oh, yes, yeah. Yes, uh... Just, just keep, get over here! It's it sounds funny. great, and it's iconic. I can keep it. It is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Mortal Kombat to me's main spirit is just that it's fun. And you might be like, well, how, that sounds so undefined. I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> like, you know, I just, but it's fun. It's when a fun, I, like, goofy world. Seeing the fact that, like, you can play as Terminator and fucking kill a predator in the, in the stuff, it's like, well, at least they're keeping that level of fun alive. But I have no idea how good the ports are these days. Mortal Kombat 11 on PC was not good, like, as a port. I remember it was, um, it did the thing that was really annoying where, like, w the menus were locked to 30 FPS, and whenever you did the, uh, X-ray, uh, I think they were called the Fatal, what were they, the, 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 basically the X-ray moves, and if you right, did yeah. the, the Fatal Blows and, um, the, the Fatalities, they'd all go to 30 FPS, it's like, this is awful, why would you do this, like... I imagine that was something they had to do on console, because console couldn't handle it, but like, I don't know why you would have that baked in. Fortunately, there were mods that could just like fix that pretty quick, so that was good. So well, they've been terrible since 2011, apparently, due to excessive retcons and character assassinations. I just, oh, as someone who played I, well before 2011, I never thought that Mortal Kombat was in some grand position to be like a victim of being torn I think, down. Uh, there are definitely people who feel- I'm, I'm pretty sure one of the big ones is a lot of people hate what they've done with Sindel, but like, she was a totally different person, and then in the new, like, since Mortal Kombat 9, she's been changed into a radically different character. Well, like, I didn't realize um, that, um, Deadly Alliance, Deception, Shaolin Monks, and Armageddon were respected. Are they? Well, I, I guess, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's, like, respected, but it might just be as simple as the characters had these attributes and now they've been changed and I don't like it, which is, you know, I, I get that. Yeah, uh... But I mean, yeah, I don't really care about the story of Mortal Kombat. To me, it's just a pretext for people to get into crazy fights. <laughs> yeah, it always <laughs> seems it. bad silly. Uh, and, and, I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to relate these two things, but maybe you could understand my perspective if I said something like, Oh no new season of, um, I don't know, like, uh, what's it called? What's the, the, the Telltale Minecraft game called? Uh, uh, uh Minecraft Story Mode? Yeah, like, if, if, yeah. if, if they made a season whatever for that, and they changed it, I'd just be like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right, really like, you know, it's fair if you wanna, this is the thing, I just, I just don't have a passion for the story that took place in those. Mm -hmm. Mortal Kombat 11 story was fucking retarded though. <laughs> that, which one's? That's the time travel one. Right, they kill the god of time, or whatever. Yeah, and they and like they're gonna rewrite the timeline, the new era, the old era, and stuff. How many and times like, can they do that? <laughs> I, well, I think that to me, it, that one was pretty clear. It's like they wanted to have a gimmick so that they could have like 90s versions of the characters, like they were in the early games. You can have 90s Johnny Cage and like Sonya Blade and, and Scorpion in their, their outfits. It's just good marketing. Oh, well, I mean, I guess you can you can try whatever you want for that. I just find it amusing because like that was what they did at the beginning of what felt like their full reboot, which I even appreciate that their opening cutscene began with yeah. the end of Armageddon. 
Well, yeah, because the Mortal Kombat 9 kind of, like, almost treats all of those games as being, like, kind of canon in a sense, but then it yeah, redoes yeah. the first three games, right? And redoes those ones. I, yeah, I think that's what we see in the story. It's hard for me to remember exactly. And that, like, I'm, same as you, I was, I was in it to just play the, the fights. Yeah. Enjoyed the mechanics. Mm -hmm. And then I think 10 was like, that was the big jump ahead where they, like, half the half the roster was brand new characters because they jumped ahead like 20 years. So you had like the kids of, um, like, you had Cassie Cage and stuff and Jackie yeah, yeah. Briggs and, um, a whole bunch of new people. You guys have Total a similar point. reaction to Resident Evil's canon? I think that's actually a pretty good question. If, um... I don't know enough about Resident Evil. If in, like, a Resident Evil 4 remake... Uh, well, so when that arrives, I'm gonna want to play the original. You know, nice and detailed -y. And then, um, it could be a similar situation as... What happened with Halo, right? They could make changes from pieces they're pulling and they, like damage some of the better bits and bobs that happen in the in the game, or they could just go their own fucking direction, it could end up being fun. Are you gonna watch the Netflix Resident Evil show? Um, well, I guess- I would be curious to see it. I'm just, I'm too curious. I, Resident Evil stuff is, it's so bad, and it's so yeah. consistently bad. Wow. I, I just kinda, uh, I'm just interested, I wanna see it. The, the response to the trailers was not good, uh, for, for that. That, uh, good, that yeah. show. Like, well, it's pretty negative. That's um, the thing, we've we've talked before about how Resident Evil stories are often, we, we don't uh, have a huge, between the three of us, don't have a huge investment in like, oh my god, the story is so good, but I, I don't begrudge anybody for caring a lot about um, Resident Evil storylines. I think it, I think it's less the storyline and more the characters, right? Like, people like Chris, Jill, uh, Leon. Well, when I say storylines, kind of I'm referring to all of it. Like Yeah, yeah. Including characters. I guess it's um I think uh the the sentiment seems to be that the the trailer indicates that it's going to be like markedly different from like what Resident Evil games are set in like the right. near future post apocalypse, which Resident Evil it really isn't just because it has zombies, it's not like the world exists in the Resident Evil world. It hasn't all broken down, you know. Um, which hey, maybe it'll be maybe it'll be good. <laughs> Who knows? Cause yeah, you know, we're not gonna be able to care about all of everything, um, as you guys would be aware of. So yeah, I would say like Mortal Kombat and Resident Evil. I think I care more about Resident Evil's story integrity than Mortal Kombat's, um, but I don't know what that says about my view of them both as franchises. To be maybe there's a greater level of continuity in like Resident Evil in I a sense. I think there is. I, I, I'm not even sure at this point. Uh, but like I've always, I've loved them both. In my own way, mainly for the mechanics, not for the story. But uh, I wouldn't want them to bring in Leon and then he's like an idiot coward. Be like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, because if if you have all these cool characters that are fun to watch and they all behave in this sort of consistent way in this very just bizarro world, uh, then that's it's fine, you know? It's like, I've got something to latch on to. Yeah. At least I know that when I see Leon or when I see Salazar or whatever, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, this is a character and they have these traits and there's, you know, not just entertainment value that comes with that, but, you know, there's some level of I could predict to a degree how a character will behave regardless of what events occur. Because the events that occur are going to be batshit insane. And probably make very little to no sense, but at least I have the characters stuck here with me for this wild ride. Um, where are we? Uh, they try to build up an emotional scene with Kai in the plane dropping out of the sky. Five minutes later, all Spartans jump out of the plane like nothing. Oh, he's talking about like the opening well, of the last episode, isn't he? Yeah, they are. Uh... They do that a lot more. Well, I mean, that's always been, well, yeah, yeah. They they've always been able to do that. Remember, uh, Noble Six falls out of like an atmosphere and lands on the planet. Got to, but is got to get in his little armor lock. But I guess armor lock, I, it must exist in that show, which makes you wonder why they don't lock Chief's armor in Episode One. But anyway, Chief is gonna come back in a Jesus allegory, maybe. Atriox wasn't even 343, Creative Assembly made him, and he was neat in Halo uh, Wars 2. That's 343. 
Oh, I'm sorry, continue for the sound. Well, I mean, it, it, it's, if you want to bring it up to pieces, we can, because, like, it, it Atrix wasn't even 343 Creative Assembly made him. What is Creative Assembly? Creative Assembly, uh, they made Halo Wars 2. He was in Halo Wars 2, but, like, that was co with 343. That I was, was going like, to say, surely 343 is still the, the, I don't know, I don't know what word you'd give it, but they've got to have an influence, right? Or... They absolutely did. They were like co-developers. Creative Assembly like made the game, but 343 would have absolutely been like responsible for the writing and stuff. So like, Atriox is a 343 creation, and even even if it was like Creative Assembly, it's like, well, it was under 343's watch. I was, yeah, series. I was about to say, if the confusion is whether or not it belongs to 343 or Bungie, it's like, well, it would be 343 at that point, man. Absolutely, 343's, yeah, 343 are co-developers. But moving forward, it yeah. says, uh, he was neat in Halo Wars 2 and then 343 took him for Halo Infinite and put their own brute OC in charge of the Banished just because. I don't know why they did that, but I mean, yeah, I'm not Is the I'm implication really then sure that what... Atriox was created by Creative Assembly in a fun way, and then 343 did with him things that made him bad, or? It seemed like 343 just kind of like pushed him out, which is odd since it seemed like they spent a lot of time hyping him up, hyping him up as like a really scary bad guy. But I, I don't know, I didn't finish Halo Infinite, so I don't, even, I don't even know what they did with that all in the end. Are you going to go through? Because for me, when I go through the Halos, I'm just doing the five that are good. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing the... the yeah. I'm not doing four or five or infinite. Uh, oh, you're going to play Halo Wars? Um. Oh, no, no, not Halo Wars. I, I kind of forgot about those, but I heard they're good. Well, I think uh, the, I heard the story in Halo Wars... One, I don't think it's any. I, I don't remember it being bad or anything. But then again, I'm not huge into Halo, so I wouldn't uh, know. Some that's apparently uh, Bungie weren't super helpful um, during the development of Halo Wars. They didn't really like the game was being given to another developer. Um, so uh, that was Ensemble, the guys who made uh, hmm. uh, Edge of Empires. First well, one. Like this is the thing. I enjoyed the game, but I'd be curious to know from someone if it, how it fares in relation, like Halo Wars campaign, how, strictly the writing, how it fares in terms of fitting into the well, universe. Because uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's set around Harvest, so it's like the earliest in the timeline of all the games. It's like right at the beginning of the war. Right. Um, I don't, I didn't play Halo Wars 1, so I can't really say. It's so fucking really bizarre, say. isn't it, that I ended up playing that probably way more than the <laughs> average person even did. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, I think uh, I think they they tried really hard though um, working on that game. That was the, that was like the last hurrah because they made that and then they were closed. Like that was their last game. Um, it, I remember I Axe Man did good enough to get a sequel. That must be nice to know. And I've wow. heard the sequels it's, also good. I heard I just hear they're good games. Sequel though made by that's because Ensemble made Age of Empires and I remember Age of Empires two was like, cool. That was a cool. That sounds like a fun idea to watch. Bring you stream Halo Wars or your cell frags. I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. Even if it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> Just to... Do I, I probably, let me check. Do I, I might, oh, that might be on Game Pass actually. Is uh, That's an idea. I've got, I, it's, it's so, it feels so weird to say this, but I've got like a nostalgia element to it that I enjoy it no matter what. Um, right. it, was, uh, it was just fun back in the day, but um. Like, I, I, yeah, Think... I wouldn't mind knowing it. Someone said that ackman has got a video on it, right? Was that you bringing so, um, yeah, uh, maybe I should have... check that out, see what he does. I like his video I think because for me, uh, yeah. For uh, well, no. for for me, I've got um, if I if I play an RTS, I still need to finish two of the three campaigns for StarCraft Two. So if I did play an RTS, I would want to finish those first. Luckily, there are uh, co-op mods that uh, exist for well, but StarCraft. That'll help me get through that. Even but... Necessarily for fun, though. I'm I'm suggesting because I'd just be curious what you guys thoughts on it are in the same way i force you to watch something like moon knight you know <laughs> yeah because i'm very nice mm -hmm. uh oh. the act man is great but the story is the heart and soul of entertainment and the fact that it looks good makes it worse not better that makes that it worse well, so Ackman, I think at one point was trying to appreciate that the show does really look good, but I'm pretty sure we all agreed. So, I yeah, the show definitely has cool props and and um, the armor. I don't know about this. Cool. Like, it makes it worse that it looks better. I, I can understand if you're saying like that means that we definitely had the potential, and so it's sad. But I don't know that we can overall call it a worse production compared to one that looked bad. 
and was badly no, written. It's so like I think I, don't think, so. I think it makes it a better show overall to look good, right? Mm hmm. Um, I am 32 today and my knees hurt. From the moment I realized my, the weakness of my flesh, it disgusted me. I craved the certainty of steel. I aspire to the purity of the blessed machine. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. <laughs> I like robot legs. Those seem like they'd be neat. Um, am I the only one who liked 343's characterization of Master Chief? Um, I don't mind it as its own thing. Uh, it's just incongruous, I think. It's a radical change, um, very quickly, with no real explanation. Uh, have you seen that Movie Bob is now working as a writer for Film Theory? Was quite shocked to see him talk about his new, that really? his new Doctor Strange video. Really? Uh, I, I, uh... <laughs> Really? <laughs> but why? So, like, he, so Matt Pat's gonna be reading out scripts written by Movie Bob. Okay. I don't even. Yeah. All right. I don't know okay. why. Okay. Uh, good for movie, Bob. Um. Anyway, hi Rags and the gang. Looking forward to this one. Oh, hi. My wife said Welsh isn't real. It's Wellamese. I think she's lying to you. I'm trying to trick you. You lies. Welsh. Fury race. Or the Waylish. I'll accept Waylish too. I all couldn't make the beginning of the stream, but I'm excited to hear you all tear this crap apart. And as a side note, Halo 2 is more cinematic than the whole of this show. I mean, that's probably. Yeah, them black hot things. Also, I'd love to be able to discuss this with y'all. Yeah, I mean, you know how it be. We have to have a, a cap. There's a couple of people who actually wanted on that Halo stream more than uh, the guests we had, but uh, I, had to, I had to cut it off. I was like, we got nine hours of garbage to talk about. We already have this many people. Yeah. Master Chief, you mind telling me what you're doing in that spy? Sir, finishing. Oh, no. You are an act, no. man. I'm rock solid and not in a homosexual way. Oh. Nice. Also, John, love you too. The showrunners were too cowardly to have Chief smacks a hot elite girl or a hot brute girl. All right, <coughs> that's the true courage. Uh, compare the Marines here to the main sergeant in Halo Wars who takes on the old Arbiter and manages to win. Dude, I remember liking Sergeant Forge quite a bit in Halo Wars. He was cool. Um, decent character, and yeah, he has his own big standoff with a with an elite. And uh, I feel like it was a pretty realistic way for why he won that fight. It's a what you could call a cheap shot of a knife in his neck. That's really the only way that you would expect like human to beat an elite in hand to hand combat. Yeah, he's not doing well up to that point, obviously. Mm hmm. And yeah, and the Spartans in uh, in Halo Wars are quite respected and revered for the most part. And well, that's uh, that's quite early on in the timeline because um, they were wearing the Mark V armor because super duper early. There's still a lot of them left. Sergeant Nolan North. He probably was voiced by Nolan North. It was yeah. Nolan North. I know that much. Voiced a lot of people. Yes, he has. He had a little cameo on Uncharted. That was nice. Yeah, but... it's Mark Four armor, Fringy. Fuck. I was just saying, I, I liked it in the Uncharted movie, and they even played the little music when he was on screen. That was that was nice. It's a shame that the whole film was pretty fucking generic and bad. Wow. Uh, Fringy, like, it's something man. new. What are the odds? It's, it's kind of funny how that film is like pulling from all four like games at once. It's just pulling parts from all four games. And so you end up with something that's like, I don't even really know what you were going for, really. It's like, you got 
I remember that was another example of them like pulling something from the games and then leaving stuff out and so you end up with this like narrative dead end with the ring it's like ah oh, yeah my brother gave me this it's like ah oh, right is that what's significant about the ring not what's written on it and who it belonged to and how that directly yeah. tied into the theme of like the first game how like he goes to the island and it's like greatness from small beginnings because francis drake was a great guy oh he died here like i he died with nothing he threw his life away for nothing damn that's like shit i'm getting rid of this ring he wasted his life oh wait no he was actually like a hero he he like made sure that nobody would be able to leave this island so that the the curse would stay here wow it really is like he was really a great guy it's like you have none of that so you just kind of have this ring but like yeah yeah he's got the ring his brother gave it to him and then it just never gets brought up again like in the film it just kind of goes nowhere Hail EFAP! Getting into this podcast and then discovering everyone's channels has been a lot like playing Smash Bros and then branching off into the solo games. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's a fun com uh, comparison. Keep on ripping apart piece of shit shows like this. Also, hi Rex. Hi. EFAP are my Super Smash Bros. I mean, kind of. You know, we, we have a lot of different people on you. And then if you go look at their own videos, a very different experience. Very fun one. Like, what genre do you best enjoy? Platformer, as FPS, RTS, then you go and find it. Maybe you like them all. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to tell Yara I'm happy and thankful you returned to new videos. I'm looking forward to new content, but I'm fine if he doesn't want to do more. Yeah, just best stuff to come from him will be the stuff that he makes in his own time for his own reasons. We're all very excited. There is no gore in this show, and I am a new subscriber. Yeah, there is. It's totally gore in the show. <laughs> There's lots of stuff. It's a bit, yeah. a bit off as There's well. There's a jackpot like, falling yeah. around with like his legs blown off and his guts trailing out. There's definitely gore, and of course when they when cauterize she... her, yeah, like that's the, yeah. probably the more of it when people would remember. Uh, yeah. Uh, look at my milestone. Look at it. Oh, I think that was one of the the. Uh, so there was like a 42 uh, member, 42 month member. I was just like, oh damn, that's like that would have been stretching back all the way to the beginning of that, right? Yeah, because um, I can't remember when they started doing channel memberships, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't long before slash after EFAP started. Was, oh shit! Because mm -hmm. they do, they finally introduced gifted memberships. They they catch up with Twitch. Well, I, I, they're kind of ahead of them, so <laughs> I don't know. Um, nice of the Covenant to not glass Quan's homeworld. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, what does it cost I guess maybe... for them to glass a homeworld, like, uh, resource-wise? So, the more important question would be, do we want to glass a planet that may house more Forerunner stuff? Yeah, I guess we That's need to like understand more... their position on... Um, well, I mean, it's it's glassing as you just bring in some, like, super carriers, they shoot some lasers on the planet and melt everything, essentially. Um, that's like the, one of the most effective ways of them essentially destroying a planet right. beyond the repair. I, well, I mean, the, the epilogue of Reach indicates that Reach is getting terraformed again, it's going to get fixed up, but like, yeah, it, it's t pretty thorough in terms of destroying a planet. Chief is a hero, noble purpose, saving humanity, the skills slash will to see it done, listen to others, e.g. Cortana, when necessary, is a leader and is willing to use violence without losing hum his humanity. Not happening in 2022. Yeah, they might even have the perspective that Chief is too simple, um, like he's too straightforward. Which, well, like, I mean, to be fair, he's an incredibly straightforward character, but that's not a problem. I think you could argue that though, everything I just read out... That could kind of match Jace in Arcane. A little bit, yeah. Even the, you know, will listen when necessary, but is a leader and will use violence. And then it says without losing his humanity, which I think he feels put at risk when he, uh, yeah. first engages in it. So, you know, saying not happening in 2022 is like, we may be able to find it in some places. Mm hmm. Uh, he finished the game, so he has the golden skin revolver upgrade. Yeah, he loves that gun. <laughs> yep. 
I'm working for a store that has harassed, blackmailed, and engaged in illegal practices. We're incredibly understaffed. We'll probably close the store. You guys get me and others through the day. Also, hi, Rags. Well, hello. I'm dude. Oh, I hope you're alright. Right. Jeez, that sounds Quite like a, a nightmare. Bit of, um, glad that the show can serve as a reprieve. Really? Um, we, we've likely all, but uh, uh, certainly, uh, I, I have told stories about it, but just hellish work environments, yeah. I used to listen to podcasts all the time. Um, certainly on my way to work, and if I was able to in work when I was doing, like, warehouse stuff. You finished? Oh, wait. Uh, Halo was the show that finally made me say, Oh, so that's how this pain feels. <laughs> well, I mean, we're on what, like, tenth fucking time at least? Well, so, probably like the twentieth time for general IP, and then like the tenth time for an adapted IP that we all like or something. I think uh, it's just that um, in the how coming... Many, how many times have games been adapted badly now? Like, it's painful every single time except... Probably League of Legends. Arcane is like, yeah. And I guess we're gonna have a lot more of those coming out in the coming, uh, years. That was something I found hilarious. That there was, like, an actual sentiment of people thinking that this was the first time that myself, Fringy, and Rags, between all of us, that we've had had to deal with something that adapts something we like badly. I was just reading it like, first of all, I don't really care about Halo that much. Um, but it's, this one doesn't even totally count for me. I just recognize that the source was better, which I can do with basically anything that we end up talking about. I, I'm willing to bet the comics are better than anything in Phase 4 that, that are based on them. Because um, mm -hmm. that's how bad Phase 4 is. But I just, again, I just don't really care about it. Um, but I thought it was interesting because it's just like I thought everyone knew that we played the fuck out of video games. And so, have you seen all the adaptations that they've done over the years? They've been horrible. Yeah, like like Mario's. Feel, like, like, did they watch us do the Doom EFAP? I don't think Mean Rags were not happy with that movie in terms of an adaptation. <laughs> like we, did not like it. But like it's, I, I don't think we said like it's bad because it's not Doom. We just said it's bad because it's fucking bad. Yeah. Funny though. <laughs> Very funny movie. And I think we had trouble deciding if we thought that one or the other one was better, right? Doom Annihilation. <laughs> They're both excellent, but uh, yeah, don't worry, we've, 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 this is not a, our first rodeo by any shot, and I imagine it's not your first rodeo person who said that. Just some of them are less overt. Because Halo, um, you know like the Silent Hill ones, or all the Lewis Anderson's Resident Evil ones, or uh, all the ones that Uwe Ball did, like, I guess they, they don't have as much People don't think about them as much in the same way as Halo, because Halo is such a high-budget and high-profile thing. Yeah, maybe. I so. mm. The Assault Rifle does not have the 117 on the real prop, it's only on the CGI drop version. Oh, is that why they did it? Because they didn't... When they did the prop version, they were like, people... It doesn't have 117, so it's like, well, why did they just fucking put it on in post? I don't know. Man, that's pretty funny. God, that's so embarrassing. That shot was so horribly bad. Everybody knew it, and then it's like, ah, now we know why. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fun arc we went on, discovering why that shot exists. Uh, check out Installation 00's video, Why the Hate. Johnny rings out... Sorry, Johnny rings got more than the gay giga gay. Who's Johnny rings? Oh, wait. No idea. That's a fun name for uh, John oh, Halo, yeah. I think. <laughs> right. <laughs> I follow. Um, hello, Mola, Fringy, and Rags. Hello. Hi. I've been slowly dying every week, seeing clips of the Halo show make it to Twitter, so I've been waiting for this EFAP with bated breath. Give them hell, guys. Hell. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Yeah. I feel like we covered basically everything we wanted to. Pretty much. The goblins take John Halo to Rubble City. Rubble City? Well, the rubble was the space station. I don't know. Oh right, yeah. City. What goblins? <laughs> I don't know who the goblins are. I know. <laughs> For the love of the dawn, you massives, play out of wilds and watch everything everywhere all at once. I mean, that's a bit of an ass, yeah. don't you think? 
Yeah, uh, we did. Uh, well, I mean, you know, you got some of what you wanted. Uh, especially if the alternative is yet another Star Wars or MCU thing we already know will suck. Hi, Ragu. Hey. Hello. Might be good one day. You guys, you guys are excited Might for Kenobi, be. aren't you? That's literally out very, very soon now. Very soon. I am. Um, I hate how they disable communications for the equivalent of the U.S. Pentagon, and no one on base freaks out or triggers lockdown or something. It's yeah, humans in this uh, show are absolutely retarded. It's it's frustrating. When something like that happens, and you go into red alert. Also, no one has cell phones, I guess, so we can't do that. I guess uh, maybe if they argue that it all goes down as a big network, but I don't know. You think they'd have some kind of backup? Maybe walkie-talkies built in as as literally a backup for when greater technology is. Because uh... you're already you're a, you're already asking me to accept that Cortana can do all of this to the super mega military installation in its entirety. So I'm like, okay. And, the, and so already I'm like, eh. but now on it on top of that, just everyone's reaction to it is not at all in any way hmm. reasonable. I'm like, oh. Uh -huh. um, have you guys talked about the people who aren't Halo fans, never played a game, read a book, but like the show? Does it have any merit on its own? Well, it's, um, no. the show? it's merit alone for people like that, that it exists. Just the fact that it's something to watch, it's a story that unfolds, it's got action in it, there's characters in it, that's enough. A lot of people like that. And then those are the kind of people that have already forgotten about this show, they don't care anymore. But I mean, the show sucks on its own terms. <laughs> like, Definitely. Even if you don't, you don't know anything about the games, and Dude, frankly, it... if you don't know anything about the games, I think you'd be very confused. If it was a really bad adaptation, but it was like a decent story, I, I think that the, the the conclusion for the internet right now wouldn't be anywhere near as negative. You would just be like, no, yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm I yeah, because you can make something different that's fine. Like that's that'd be that'd be preferable than something that's different and crap. <laughs> you know. Maybe Halo. Or something that's different and good would be cool. You know, even in its own, as its own thing. Maybe Halo the series is what happens when you use the activation index to wipe out all life forms within twenty five thousand light years. Mm. A live action Speed Racer series is in the works at Apple TV with JJ Abrams set to executive produce. I literally look. Like, I don't know. I have no confidence in his ability to make anything that I think would be good at this point. Why does he get to executive produce and produce so much stuff? I. I stopped watching after episode one. Did John Halo become Elden Lord? Or did Asian Boy become a crystal gem? Or did Knockoff Gaga come out as a man? Knockoff Gaga? Who that? Oh, no the idea. wife? His wife, maybe? Um. Well, I mean, you got our coverage. We went through all the major plot points. I think, anyway. Uh, FYI, Mac means magnetic accelerator cannon. They're super rail guns. Neat. Yeah. yeah, I figured they were. Yeah, the Mac Cannon, I think, is the one of the top tier sort of hero powers in Halo Wars. I think Cutter has it, along with the ODXC. Makes sense. What did you say? Except what? Sorry? Makes sense. Oh, right. Yeah, because um, that was kind of a fun element to the game. The UNSC teams you had. I forget the girl's name, but she had like the Hawk uh, aircraft that are pretty good. And then. Forge had the... Uh, he had tanks that were better than anyone else's. Right. Um, I wish before killing Mackie they had a flash of Joel playing his guitar. I am a smart deep writer. Or am I <laughs> one yet? Yeah, I mean, that would have made it way better. Would have been able to heal. Oh. Rags. Johnny Rings is the wrong armor. He should be in his CE armor. That he had before and after the fall of Reach could have shown him using pouches. I mean, he could have. Oh, Anders was what her name was, apparently. We've got a couple real good fringy lead EFAPs. When's Rags gonna jump in the hot seat? Gonna have to be when 
we cover something that he's got the most interest in out of the three of us, I guess. What's that gonna happen, Rags? Huh? Huh? What? When's what gonna happen? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. Uh, also, episode 200 idea, complete breakdown, Lord of the Rings extended trilogy. Oh. A complete breakdown of that? Oh, boy. That would take some time. That will take 24 hours. Probably. Sounds to me like they treat writers like a, contra a contractor. Uh, cheap labor used to fill someone in the s some slop they want done. As long as their financial situation is fulfilled, they don't care. It does seem to feel that way. Yeah. You get that vibe that writers aren't just... Just us hire someone. Just hire someone. Whatever. Mm-hmm. It's only the writing. At least I can play the Halo 5 campaign with a mindset that it could be much worse. That lineup. Do you think the what, Halo the... show is much worse? Halo 5? I don't know. I don't know about that one. I'm not sure. Uh, Raiden... Turning off his pain inhibitors out of 10. Is that Raiden, maybe? Uh, I think it's... Oh, is it? Then Raiden turns off his pain inhibitors. He wants to feel the pain. The pain when he, that's when he oh, goes Oh yeah, that's crazy, what I'm saying. Right? Like, I don't know if it's a reference to Mortal Kombat or Metal Gear, but I'm assuming Metal Gear. It's probably Metal Gear. There's a part where like Raiden just... I don't know why I'm saying Raiden. It's Raiden. Raiden's Mortal Kombat, where mm -hmm. Raiden like turns off his pain inhibitors. He's like, I want to feel the pain, and then he's like, it's time for Jack to let her rip because he goes insane a little bit there in the middle. That game was so confusing the first time I played it. I didn't know anything about Metal Gear Solid, <laughs> so I was just like, what is happening? Fun game though. Um, on principle, I give it a zero out of ten. I don't know what 0 out of 10 exists, like, whatever that would look like. Well, it's the reverse for us. On principle, we don't give 0 out of 10, pretty much, anyway. Yeah. Like, could, could give it to something, but that thing wouldn't have been something that anyone would... It would just be like, yeah. the shoe is a 0 out of 10 story, I guess. Uh, Sex with a Prisoner of War out of 10. Yes. I'm good. The least of its issues. Ringy says, no memorable lines. What about when the Covenant comes out of the portal like, we are all the Covenant, and then he's like, I am John Madden, and then does a backflip, snaps the bad guy's <laughs> neck, and saves the day. I am John Madden. I forgot about that scene. That was a that's, good scene, yeah. yeah. Hello, chat, people, and EFAP. Hello. Hi. The Halo show is just depressing to me. Halo was the first game that made me realize video games could be more than a platformer like Sonic. Fall of Reach would have been perfect for a show. No. Don't get to hell. Eat what they gave you. Hey, I got some good and bad news. The bad news is that I'm officially ending the Spooder Wars saga. The two episodes oh. you guys haven't seen are the last two. Well. I, mean, I really liked them. So well, I'm looking be, forward to seeing these last two. Yeah, they'll be coming up, and uh, we're trying. To, we're going to try and record a meme fab soon enough, because we are very, very close to finishing the super chat catch up in totality. The good news is that I'm rebranding the channel to focus on reviewing media. I do appreciate you guys watching it and having fun along the way, but as of late, the Spooder Wars are officially over. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Thank you so much for for making what you did, and uh, good luck with your new endeavors. Absolutely. Uh, meanwhile, the Judge Dredd remake never had the helmet off, and it was an amazing movie. The Carl Urban one did, yeah. You guys ever see the Stallone one? I haven't seen either of them. Oh. The Free Fat movie. Someday. I have not seen the Stallone one, no. I've seen the... The Goofy I've seen movie. Dredd. It was... It was the first, uh, the the new one, the Carl Urban one. It was the first movie I ever saw in 3D. Whoa! Did you not see Avatar in 3D? No. Wow, I want to lose. Oh, it. okay. 
Yeah, everybody saw Avatar. Well, probably not, but lots of people saw Avatar in 3D. I saw it in 2D. Second God, that was, that was, Remember, like, 3D TVs? <laughs> Holy shit. That was a bad idea. <laughs> play Fallout. They're making a show of it on Amazon. We've all played yeah, Fallout, haven't we? At least in some way. They're asking for a specific one. I don't know. Imagine a voice actor demanding face recognition like they demand a photo of their face plastered on top of their cartoon character and the writers are forced to make that make sense in context. Well, I, I, I don't know what it is, but there definitely seems to be like an attitude where it's like, you don't need to voice act. Well, I mean, we saw it right. Remember Space Jam? It's like, ah, yes, it's got like, got uh, LeBron James and, and everybody and Zendaya as Lola Bunny. It's like, yeah, who's playing Bugs Bunny? Oh, we don't need to put the, the guys playing Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck and like all a whole host of characters. We don't need to put their name on. So like just they're doing the silly cartoon voice. They're a voice actor. They're not an actor. It's like really annoying attitude. I mean, I guess, I guess it, it, it almost translates though, right? People don't know voice actors as well as they know actors. It probably is because you don't see their face. It is probably true. is like a real consideration. I, I just don't think that that should matter when it comes to storytelling decisions. Like, I don't know. I don't agree to play a character who's going to be masked all, all the time, like in a helmet. Like that's going to be a problem, you know? Mm. Um, you should check out Lost Chord of the Little Platoon podcast. Just imagine Muller if he were kidnapped by aristocrats and raised at Downton Abbey. Oh. Apparently that's what you get when you listen to the Lost Chord of the Little Platoon podcast. Um, Adi Yard, do you give permission to post your link to the Turning Red video in the EFAP chat? Um... I don't know if you have, you can post links. I think only mods can, so. But, um, I mean, yeah, I, I, go check out his Turning Red review, it's funny. Uh, yeah. That film, uh, I, I haven't seen it. I've just not heard the greatest of praise for it. Not much passion for it, you know? Um, it's kind of odd you say that, because I remember when it came out, I saw a lot of people praising it, and a lot of people really hated it, but now nobody talks about it. So it seems like it's just one of those flash in the pan it came out now it's, it's just that's it nobody really cares anymore yeah i guess that's all i saw was the the lack of coverage um to be fair it took a while for me to realize it was pixar i guess i, I, I guess i didn't well, register I was, that way i think that's the, uh, the third pixar film that didn't get released in theaters and went straight to disney plus not even with the premium fee like they uh they did with uh the disney like walt disney animation studios ones Light years coming out in theaters though soon too. <laughs> God damn! Like I'm, yeah. that was we're gonna be really annoying. Hey guys, this is the movie that Andy watched that made the toy in the first film. Even though it doesn't look like it would made in 1995, it looks like a 2022 animated film. Well, it's also weird that you would not have the actor just run a couple of lines to then put in the toy. If you understand what I'm saying. But like, well, yeah, the implication why, why being Alan instead of like, yeah. Chris, uh, Chris Evans. Like in if Chris universe, Evans they hire a line. different guy to give him lines into the toy, and it's just like, but I guess that happens sometimes. But it does like, yeah, happen, but like usually, I don't know. I was about to no, say, I don't, I don't, I don't do mean, an impression. I, don't mean. I was about to say, even then, no, you I... could just take lines from his movie, right? But <laughs> I, I get you. Remember um, the, when Krusty I mean... has to record lines for his doll? Oh yeah, hey, hey, I'm Krusty. Hey, hey, here comes Sideshow Mel. Repeat, here comes Sideshow Mel. Sideshow Mel. Three. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom, I'm done. Learn from the professionals, kid. Yeah. And then I was like, all right, Krusty, we're good to go. Krusty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, hey guys, thanks for suffering through this dumpster fire for our entertainment. I couldn't bring myself um, to watch yeah. episode two. That makes sense. This I don't blame really you. Bad. Uh, will you guys be doing a complete breakdown of everything everywhere all at once? We very much may be, yes. The third day, not that long away. Halo Legends, the cartoon miniseries, is still the only TV Halo content that's good. I don't know, is it? I would have seen that, but so long ago that I couldn't tell you anything about it. It was like an animated anthology thing. Mm -hmm. 
Hello all, I'm looking to do an in-depth analysis on Attack on Titan, much larger undertaking than I originally thought and was wondering what the process you guys would use to script and edit such a thing. Um, process? Uh, watch it multiple times, take notes while you're watching it, pause it, think about things as they hop into your head, uh, go over your script a few times, think about how it will actually, how, how when you put it into a video, you know, uh, how will people listen to it and sort of absorb the information in terms of what kind of structure you're presenting it? Um, think about what visuals you will want to have to represent the things you're talking about. Something I would say is it may be worth keeping in mind that uh, when you're in the editing process, you should be willing to allow that process to play out in a way that may change your scripts. Uh, just as long as I guess you keep in mind that it will, you know that it's changing your script for the better. I guess don't don't uh, it's 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 important to have a really strong script, but uh, don't allow yourself to be so rigid that you miss out on opportunities for jokes or new insights. And then of course, if you're gonna have conversations on just how bad the show is, or how good the show is, or how bad or good the adaptation from the original is, and section it all out, try and do just a basic kind of plan so it gives yourself structure so you don't end up. You know, putting it in more places than one, like different points that you're trying to make. The uh, redrafts will help you avoid repeating yourself. Bring things up where you feel they're relevant. You know, just break everything down into smaller pieces. And, uh, build it all back up into one big hole. Because, yeah, I'm assuming this would be a very big project. Attack on Titan is a long show and a long source material, from what I know. So, good luck! Hey, uh, what are you going to do about the gems? Please give us a solution. Also, I love you and your vids. Brady's not here. ER, any thoughts on doing something on Evangelion? Uh, just finished the movie series and anime, and I still have next to no idea what happened. I don't know. I think I think it's going to be a complete mystery as to what videos he may or may not do, and I think he wants it that way. I can't say I find that approach unappealing. Little Quinky Dink, rewatched ER's Life is Tumblr vid last night. Still love it, although ER, you should list the songs used in the description. Hmm. Yeah, I don't remember what uh, what songs were in that one. Life is Strange is pretty bad. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> the, mecha the mechanics don't even make sense in terms of, like, the time travel. Like, she- because it's like- like you pointed out, she she's manipulating time and space, and also when traveling backward mm -hmm. and forward in time, killing and supplanting the con. A lot of time travel stories don't think about that whole idea of killing yourself, essentially killing your consciousness. It's like the Days of Future Past thing. When when Charles is like, "Welcome back," it's like, "Oh, what about like the Logan who existed and lived that whole life? He's just dead. Yep, he died, and he was a person. He had a whole life, and now he's gone." And you're, like, happy about that. <laughs> Bit odd. It's like, oh, it's finally you, as opposed to that other prick, who was also you. <laughs> but who cares about him, right? Um, There were a few tracks in the vid I recognized, but didn't know the names of. I tortured myself trying to remember them. They were from Haikyuu, by the way. Haikyuu? I don't know what that is, but... Uh... Yeah, sorry, I can't help you there. Alright, this is a series of eight in a row that are all the same thing, or part of the same thing. All right, here we go. Tolkien, on fairy stories, is a trove of great writing thoughts by the grandfather of fantasy. His selection on le uh, le legitimacy and logic. The many fantasy, the sub-creative art which plays strange tricks with the world and all that is in it, combining nouns and redistributing adjectives, uh, has seemed suspect, if not illegitimate. To some, it seemed at least a childish folly, a thing only for persons in their youth. Fantasy is a natural human activity. It certainly does not destroy or even insult reason. It does not either blunt or uh, the appetite for, nor obscure the perception of scientific variety, or verity, sorry. On the contrary, the keener and the clearer is the reason the better the fantasy will it make. 
If men were ever in a state in which they did not want to know or could not perceive truth, facts or evidence, then fantasy would languish um, until they were cured. If ever they got into that state, it would not seem at all impossible. Fantasy will perish and become morbid delusion. For creative fantasy is founded upon the hard recognition that things are so in the world as it appears under the sun on a recognition of fact, but not a slavery to it. Uh... Tolkien on fairy stories. I mean, yeah, I mean, it sounds like he's appealing to the idea that we shouldn't, shouldn't be treated as nonsense. In fact, the fact that it's constructed and relies on some form of a rule yeah. is important to it. Mm-hmm. That Tolkien guy ever make anything that was good? You guys know about it? Hmm. I don't know, I, I think but he made hopefully. Like a little fairy story, didn't he? Oh, a little fairy tale story. That's nice. Something like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um. You know, go check out his stuff sometimes. Seems like he knows what he's talking about. I don't know. Maybe he made Morbius. <laughs> uh, Morbius. Lord of the Morbius. Uh, it seems obvious that Quan is going to take Chief's body into a spirit walk through the witches to bring him back somehow for saving her life. Oh, that's actually... You might be right. <laughs> that's, that's actually... Yeah, that could be it. Uh, race swapping keys was a missed opportunity to play music by the Black Keys. Oh, there you go. What a reference. Hi, everyone. Can you even imagine RDJ's Iron Man in MCU Phase 4 with such a level of bad writing? Dude, he's been in badly written films. Yeah. <laughs> Specifically, Iron Man has been. Yeah, free. Uh, well, Ed Maybe Davis, they're like, referring the to him, him specifically really being the, like, as bad as Phase 4. Yeah, it would Generally. be. It would suck um, to see. My heart it is break. hard to imagine. My heart breaks thinking about it. Also, hi, Ragsy. Hi. Digimon of the day. Check out Gargamon. Gargamon. Uh. Gargamon Digimon. Yeah. That's a Digimon. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It looks like a like that, like a green rabbit with like gun hands. Uh, let's see. Let get a picture. <laughs> green rabbit with gun hands. I don't know. Uh, I'll show you. <laughs> It's just the Digimon with jeans and gun hands. Oh my god. Yeah. That looks... I don't know, that looks kind of awful? Like, in terms of just a It looks horrifically idea. stupid. Yeah. Like, why would you... What are you doing? None of this <laughs> matches any of itself. <laughs> yeah. It's like... I don't know, it's stuff. Shut up. And you're like, okay. It's like, alright, it's like a weird green rabbit. And you're like, okay. Walks upright. Okay. He's got a horn. All yeah, right, he's green man. and green and cream colored. Is that a bandolier okay. he's got as well? Yeah, he's got this weird bandolier thing. Does it have How anything in the bandolier? No, it's just empty. Into his, like, he doesn't go hands. Does he have hands? No, no, he has these weird like revolver oh. cylinder guns. I assume they spin around and shoot. Uh, he has he has some face paint on. That's cool. He's got some jeans. And this weird bandolier Good that's thing. held on by a massive belt buckle. Mm -hmm. What a ridiculous creature. Yeah, hold it. Uh, Cortana has a line in Infinite about a fake sun. Hold into anything? Or? I don't know. Isaac. Uh, the hair dye is a reference to feminists dyeing their hair at some sort of protest. It makes just as much sense IRL as in the show. I mean, is, I figured it was just a way to show that she was trying to do things differently or something, but it's like there are way more, I think, meaningful ways to show that than whatever the fuck that was. Like the gun oil thing, I just... Nobody even... It didn't feel intuitive at all that that's how that works. Yeah. And, I mean... I don't know. It's just stupid. 
legally getting it on with a prisoner of war is grape. Master Chief in the show is committed grape. Canon. Uh, oh, right, because there's, like, elements of duress. Well, this um, power dynamic is yeah. insanely... Uh, dynamic, uh, yeah, fuck. On one. Play the Ghostbusters game. It does not have any 2016 in it. Well, it was made before then, so... It doesn't surprise me. <laughs> if we're talking about the one I'm thinking of. Uh, it's got it's like a spiritual successor for Ghostbusters 2, right? It was on 360, I think. Oh, I I've heard about it, but I don't I don't know. I think it even has the original voice actors in it for um at least a couple of them, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm drunk and shocked you're still on. Take my dollars. Thank you very much. I fell asleep while listening to you guys, and my dream was you guys talking about the Halo TV show. I can literally listen to EFAP in my sleep. Also, hi, Rags. Hi. That. Uh, we're really getting around now, you know? We're in your dreams. Yeah. Why did the show have to follow Chief? Would you guys have preferred an ODST or non-Chief Spartan leads? I would have been fine with that. Yeah, I would have been fine with that, considering... It's not that you couldn't do a story with Chief as the protagonist, but his personality, if you're going to adapt it semi within the bounds of accuracy, um, he just isn't. It, it, him alone probably wouldn't be a good idea, especially if you want to have it be dialogue heavy, if you want to have people talk to each other a lot, which for budgetary reasons might be like I understand, you know, you can't have action sequences all the time uh, and, you know, crazy places all the time so if you're gonna fill up a lot of the a lot of the story with dialogue and world building aspects and building up characters and you want him to you want to have someone there for him to bounce off of and communicate with and so it's not just him mm. or you have cortana do a whole lot of the talking or observations which you know she wasn't in this much either uh cortana? but boy kwan it's a lot of time, and the weird keys gets a lot of time. It's yeah, it's, it's bizarre decisions all around. Um, do they hire writers indirectly through a company? I'm not a hundred percent sure of how they, uh, as as it's as it's commented on these days by a uh, uh, Gary and some others that directors and writers are like cast nowadays almost. Like they're looking for yeah, um, the project begins and then you find them rather than someone coming to you with an idea and then they they work on it unfortunate but i mean there's going to be an infinite supply because it's all like think of michael waldron man you're like i get to write a loki as a whole a whole tv show for me and then it does so well <laughs> they're like you know we're, we're, we're kind of eyeing you up for uh you can fix up multiverse of madness you, you yeah and he's like oh my god yeah and then they're like man you're amazing and he's like i know and they're like, you can do Star Wars. And he's like, I, I, that, this is it. This is meritocracy. Oh. Uh. <laughs> How could you say that? It's so offensive. Man, if he, like, his Star Wars movie, that's going to be something else, isn't it? I wonder if he'll put multiverse in it. Ooh. Maybe. That sounds fun. It'll be like Omniverse, and we'll have Mario and yeah. Tobey Maguire jump in. <laughs> uh, so this was, uh, they just got put in the EFAP memes. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> they can tell. When they're watching me play this game, I randomly veer off the road, and they're just like, oh, he's, he's reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's how it is. <laughs> um, type on your Google search bar "men can" and look at the search suggestions. All right, oh. well, let's go to Google. Men can. <sighs> Men can get pregnant. Men can lactate. Men can menstruate. Men can breastfeed. Why is that all? Men of the... can cry. Well, like, why wouldn't... I don't know. It feels like there would be more common questions or common searches than that. Yeah. But okay. That's not what I expected. No, that's not what I expected either. Sure um, they can. Yeah. You go for it. 
Hard to convey how much of a cultural, sorry, cultural, I think they mean cultural, phenomenon Halo was. Blew me away was made specifically for Halo 2. Wait, Blow Me Away was made specifically for Halo 2, sorry. Number one charting single for a video game. It's a banger, yeah, it's fun. Because I, the, there's the, I think it's the instrumental in the games, and then they have a lyrical version that was on the Halo 2 original soundtrack on the CD. By the way, one of the first CDs I've ever I ever bought was the Halo 2 uh, soundtrack because what a banger. There's some great tunes in there. Yeah. Um, why is it impossible for Hollywood to understand that heroes are something we're supposed to strive for, not something that we want to brought down to our level? Um, I mean, you know, a down-to-earth, realistic, everyday guy becoming a hero is kind of a cool thing, right? Because it makes you feel like, hey, that could be any of us someday. That's where the inspiration mm. comes from. Um, I would just go as far as saying they uh, they just don't know how to write heroes or villains anymore because they've got a really they get bad, morally confused. Th there's that, and then just they're just hideously bad at writing to the point where they don't even understand. Sometimes they write themselves into mechanics they didn't even realize existed. I'm not sure what the it's like an emergent property, right? Like when you have three mechanics you need for different things, and then it's like, wait, but if these three things are true, then this is true, and they're like, wait, what? I didn't, I didn't say that, and you're like, you didn't have to say that, you said the three things, that makes this happen. So, um, they, most of the time they don't even notice. Um, I bet a Call of Duty ghost show would be better than this. Hi, Rags. Hello. Yeah, it probably would be. There are three Lovecraft-inspired segments in the Night Gallery from, uh, 1968 hosted by Rod Sterling. They're a fun... They're fun early adaptations. Also, high rags and free. Hello to you. I've, uh, I've not seen those, but. Um, any EFAP has checked out Reykjavik's uh, years later series on the Halo video games. Recommend it. It's a good overview of the game series. Hail East Yar Senpai. Yeah, I've seen that series. I have not. I presume they're good. I don't know. I haven't, well, I saw them like years ago on this stage, so. Hmm. Why is his name Pingu when is he's a friggin' penguin? Pen penguin. <laughs> I don't know. Why does it need to be anything? Why it must could he be... follow your restrictions? Exactly. Pingu is a bone dude. Yep, he's his own penguin. Would have been great if at the end of the season they told John Halo we ran a test and the emotion suppressor was broken and hadn't worked for years. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out you're just a boring fuck. Hey, but what was that euphoric moment I had when I was listening to the music and stuff and it's like, you're just crazy, John. You're really crazy. <laughs> really crazy. You're hitting the head. Hey all, curious if any of y'all have played the Metro game series or read the books. Terrific, in my honest opinion. Have a great night. Hi, Rags. Hi. I played Last Light, and I really liked it. I've not played any Really good atmosphere. I played a bit of Last Light, um, but I've read Metro 2033. Well, listen to the audiobook. I thought it was great. Uh, I'm just enjoying that every time Fringy says Quan, it sounds like that floompy Kryptonian creature, the Quarn. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. You say Quan, don't you? I don't think, do you say Quarn? I think I say Quan. I don't, I don't say Quan. He's always said Quan. Yeah. However, that is it for the Halo EFAP Super Chats. Uh, Woohoo. Now... We'll do Streamlabs. Let us let us grab them. The first one is why can't Metroid crawl? A good question. Perhaps we will discover the answer to it one day. Why do people think Fringy is a Tonberry? Tonberries don't have beaks, and they're not even birds either. That's a good point. Yeah. I'm not a bird. Also, bonjour to rags. Oh, bonjour. And the Australian green broadbill bird. Mm. 
not bird. <laughs> Must be talking to someone else. I doubt he's talking to me or Rags. He said green. An Australian. I feel like he's yeah, okay. gonna be one of us. I feel like you're just mistaken with some sort of key fact. Hmm. I just finished a 36 mile walk in 10 and a half hours. Thanks for keeping me entertained for half of it. Halo sounds like a bad show. Glad I didn't watch it. Oh. Yeah. About sums it up. Yep. Pretty bad. But, uh, yeah. Glad we kept your company on your walk. Can anyone give me the best impression of Metal Commander? I want to hear the sorrow in your voice for the lost potential of the glorious future of the German Ubermensch. Metal impression. Um, mm. it's, it's mainly just like a sense of pure despair and disappointment constantly. <laughs> Not even a particular <laughs> sound or words, it's just that feeling, that's what you gotta do. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, even, I don't even know how, where I would begin trying to sound like metal. Actually. You got any suggestions, anybody? I don't. That's a tough one. Rex, right, you want us to try and sound oh, like Mel? Sound like... I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, like, what the strategy here is for my mouth. Mm hmm Sound like metal. Uh... Hello, my name is Metal... No, that's, that's <laughs> wrong. Uh... Um, cause, like, I feel like it's a voice that I have to try for yeah he, a little bit he yeah. has a, yeah, li yeah. a little bit a little bit of an accent it, you have to like it's it's like like you're you're sculpting something and you have to work at it you can't just do yeah, it you, what you're you've got it's not like problem. an arnold schwarzenegger you it's know like you're trying to turn the dial on accent and it goes from zero to one and one's already <laughs> too much so you're like no I need, yeah i need something in between yeah because ah uh, it's he he's got a tough one to do because it's not like, it's distinctive like everyone's voice is, but it isn't like, oh, I'd recognize that voice anywhere kind of voice, you know? Um, it's... Uh, yeah, that's tough, because cause he has a little, little bit of an accent. Yeah, he does. But it way. isn't it isn't too strong. Like, you wouldn't even know that he was... Like, you wouldn't even know that he was German. But you know that he was from someplace else. I think people it, guess yeah, it's really European. hard to do. Yeah, you, you'd have to. I'd have to. I really fiddle around with it and play around with trying to nail the voice because I think he's got a really tough one to. Um, I think, I think to it is, you've made progress quite a bit already, though. I can I can smell yeah. the metal in that voice. That's great. Tough one though, it really is. Um, can we? Can anyone just tell Mel to get a better voice so we can impersonate it easier? Okay. You have a more stereotypical voice. Uh, Metal Commander is there. Can he do an impression of Ronald McDonald? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what yeah, Ronald what McDonald sound like? sounds like. I don't what a, remember it. What is? I want to know what his shadow friend sounds like. That's who I oh, want yeah. to know. <laughs> that was so weird when we <laughs> when we went yeah. into that we <laughs> that rabbit hole and we saw the shadow creature on the picture. <laughs> Out of the family <laughs> rag. That's the shadow. Uh, Would you like nuggies with that, Daniel? Okay, so this is uh, the this is four, four of these in a row. Okay, all of his co-hosts were gone. What could it mean? Mola decided to go to the Discord server. Perhaps he said simply missed a memo. When Mola came to a set of two minimized programs, he clicked one on the left. This was not the correct way to open the Discord server. Mola knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the efap.me memes first, just to admire them. But eager to get back to business, Mola clicked the program on his left. Mola was so bad at following directions, it's incredible. He didn't lose his channel years ago. Oh, it's, it's um, family parable. But in his eagerness to prove that he was in control of the story, no one gets to tell him what to do. Mola shot himself in the head, killing himself instantly. Good job, Mola. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. I need to play that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stream it. It's gonna happen. Ultra Deluxe. Boy. Hey, Fringy, how did you go from a green blob to a green circle head to a green Spider-Man and finally to Plague Doctor? Is this Fringy's final form? Um. 
Oh, like, oh, I, I like Plague Doctors. I thought that was more interesting. It's like a aesthetic. Kind of not much more else to it. <laughs> like, I just like Plague Creating Plague, Plague Doctor culture. Well, the, um, the green Spider-Man, I assume it was just inspired a bit by superheroes or something. It kind of did look like a... It was, it was more like green Deadpool than anything. Yeah, it's kind of that. Mm -hmm. And then I remember I... Yeah. Yeah, because there was nothing, then there was that, and then there was the Plague Doctor. Uh, Mola, my girlfriend broke up with me, so you are obligated to promise me to never ever make Metal Host. Better yet, have him on every ever again, otherwise I'll kill myself. What? What? Why? Why would... Why would your girlfriend break it up with everything to do with Metal becoming host of EFAP? What's what's the connection? Any the woman who would break up with you because Metal was a host of EFAP is not a woman that deserves your time. And, uh, that you better be wary. That's all I'm saying. Yes, make J host. Oh, and do a better call cool Soul Stream some tisms, but I fucking love it. Um, I don't think that's gonna happen. Nor is Jay gonna become a host. Jay's busy, okay? Jay's making videos. None of us make videos. Except for the I was about made. to say. Yeah. You gotta do better, Senator. Do better, do it better, faster, stronger, and then Falcon reveals he was Kanye all along, kicks old man Senator's balls, screaming, I'm a gay fish. Yeah, it could have been an alternative ending. I think it would have been more popular. Um, anyway, the first 15 minutes of Ricky Gervais' new special on Netflix killed me. I have been meaning to watch that. I sh I'll get to it. I've seen I've seen parts, and it's been pretty darn funny. Well, what I've seen the most is everyone being very angry at him, and I was like, ooh. Maybe it's oh, funny. yeah, I've, I saw <laughs> some of those parts, and I was legitimately laughing really hard, because it's funny as fuck. Yeah, and, and this is the thing. The people who, like, tweet out making jokes about how bad he is as a comedian, I'm fine with that. Go right ahead. I just... Just don't ban him, please. That's all. Go right ahead. Say he's the worst comedian ever. Because uh, I think even he has commented that this is one that could seriously get him in trouble. Um, which... Oh, well, it can happen. Uh, Alright, so that's Streamlabs caught up now. We're over right. to Super Chat Catch Up for Super Chat Catch Up for the Multiverse of Madness Part One. So this is the Super Chat Catch Up for the Super Chat Catch Up for Multiverse of Madness Part One. Yeah, so we did Multiverse of Madness Part One, and then we did a catch up stream to catch up with some stuff, including that, and we didn't manage to catch up with the ones that came in on that stream while we were catching up. I figured that was what it meant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very intuitive. Easy to understand. Um. Everything Everywhere All at Once is the real Multiverse of Madness. I'd be shocked if it isn't in a top five movie by the end. What an experience. Quite the compliment. Yeah, I, I, I like it too. Give it a big old thumb. Yeah. Um, end of the year. Seriously, go watch it. Oh, I have. I did. Keep a dog shaking his body from left to right, surrounded by red hearts. Surrounded by red hots, red hots, and that's. Yeah. Oh, I was about to say that. I thought I thought it was red hots. The candies. Do you guys have those? Uh, not familiar to me. We might have them. Um, yeah, let me get you a picture real quick. But red hots are just little. They're like these cinnamon. Um, uh, yeah, on, da, 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 copy image. I don't really care for them too much. But they're just these little cinnamon candies that are kind of hot. Like, oh, I know. know about those, actually, yeah. Oh, yeah, that seems familiar. Oh. Me dancing around Red Hot, so I was like, well, yeah, I could. Mm. <laughs> I just didn't know where the reference of Red Hots came from. Um, in Mother, during the opening montage, you can see one baby thrashing at the bunny toy, but the next kid is playing with it. Nice little foreshadowing. There's a couple of clues that um, the collection of sort of imagery we see, like with the kid growing up, that it, there's, there's a couple of quick clues that it's not the same kid as the, the clips go by. I'm quite fond of that movie. There's a couple of clever stuff. Nothing things. Yeah. 
Hello from Texas. Have you guys seen Dune? Thought? Uh, I have seen Dune. One of the best uh, we got I for liked the year. it. Uh, which year did it come out again? It was 2021, right? Yes. I think so. Um, yeah, we did coverage of it. You um, you died for like the whole thing in your ranks. You got, your, your house got bulldozed. You were, you were fighting an adventure or something. I can't remember what happened to you, but something happened to you during that I stream. had to... I, yeah, I, something happened and I needed to head off for part of it, but mm -hmm. the, um, I, I, I liked Dune. I liked Dune. I, I like a nice like slow, uh, atmospheric kind of movie where you can just sort of sit down and just watch it kind of like Avatar in a way, you know, where you just want to sit down and watch this place, this alien place and people kind of being in it, you know, it's. Yeah, it, it had this, uh, it had that kind of feel to it, and I liked it. Yeah. Anything you want to add, Fringy, about the movie? Not really. No, I like it. Well. Also, I'm a commercial like, electrician. It makes me actually angry to hear Hassan call himself working class. I can actually die at my job. Hey, so can he. Hey, he could choke on a nuggie. Yeah. And what if he's not allowed to play a video and he starves? What is he, what is that's that? true. That's true. He could die. That's not what. That's not what he's supposed to do. Been replaying God of War One. Holds up very well for its age. Uh, it's like the. I think I remember feeling it's the clunkiest of the trilogy when I replayed them. But uh, I still quite like the charm of all of God of War. It's a. Uh, it's fun. Hello, chaps. I've gone into Tism on Twitter over Starkiller Base. It went from that to the Episode 9 Star Destroyers and Beacons to the Star ST as a whole. Fuck my life. Oh, no. I don't want to be caught on Twitter talking about the sequel trilogy forever. That's no good. Uh, memories broken, the truth goes unspoken. I've even forgotten my name. Don't know the season or what is the reason. I'm standing here holding my blade. I'm assuming these are lyrics, I don't know. That's, that's, uh, that's Metal Gear Rising. Ah. Yeah, the way that you uh, say it, like it's a limerick or a Dr. Seuss rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm imagining uh, it in the game like that. It's when you fight Sam, it's one of the cool... I mean, all the boss fights are cool, but that's one of the coolest boss fights in the game. Amazing. They might have changed some of the lyrics, though. I don't know. It, I just recognize some of them. Hey, Fab Gang, should humanity try contacting potential alien civilizations, or should we just quietly observe the galaxy? Um, well, because the Dark made a cool video on that, the Dark Forest. Do you want to say anything else, or...? Uh, well, so the, the premise is that, um... That, that when you're... Imagine you're, like, the species sort of here, traveling through this crazy cosmos. Um, it seems really quiet. The reason why is because maybe the civilizations that were louder didn't last very long. Because when you encounter someone else in the dark forest and you don't know anything about their intentions, it might just be safer to shoot first. Um, and so it's it basically the idea is, hmm, if we like encounter aliens, maybe it might be a good idea to not make ourselves super well known because just because of the nature of how big the galaxy is and how unknowable the intentions of other species or uh, civilizations may be, it'd be very scary to uh, to make yourself known and call attention to yourself. They might, because just of the, the existential threat that could be posed due to technological differences between um, civilizations and how long it takes for them to communicate and how long, yeah. I know what you're the... talking about. It's when you're in Age of Empires and you walk out too far and you bump into barbarians and then they come back to your civilization and destroy and you're like, if only I hadn't explored too far to the right, I would have been fine. Yeah, you know, it's like, well, you've 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 brought yourself into the, oh, the equation. We do bump into these aliens and they're like, we have the cure for everything and happiness all the time. Here it is. It's like, yeah. oh, sweet. Thank goodness yeah, we explored. Yeah, that might be super nice. Yeah. Yeah, then you just load up an old save and you don't go that way in Age of Empires. That's all you have to do. <laughs> uh, Wings quote of the day. There's a reason why I'm 30 goddamn one gray hair, gray beard. Aw. That's a... 
interesting sentence. I guess, uh... I don't know what, like, is this stress can cause, like, grain of your hair, yeah. Right? yeah. You've seen all those pictures of presidents yeah. at the beginning and then yeah, the end of the their turn? The Turns out presidency is a stressful job. Who'd have thunk Who'd have thought? it? Bonus. Uh, you fucking fuckers better donate. Oh, no. <laughs> you fucking fuckers <laughs> better donate. Oh, my God. Bringy, thoughts on Roe v. Wade? No. Not, <laughs> not get anything. Uh, reference to Maxor of the day. In this adventure, you play as the famous video game protagonist Elden John, as he undergoes many trials and tribulations on his quest to fight the entire Catholic Church and kill God. That does kind of describe Elden Ring, yeah. Um, Mary Sue with the OP magic multilingual pride flag pin on her jean jacket, two lesbian mums, everyone likes her, has zero flaws, all real struggles. I mean, you could call it a struggle if she fucking killed her two parents. Yeah. And also doesn't even know how to, like, seemingly control her powers to do that. Yeah. Like, can get around or do anything. Funnily enough, both of those things would be undone right at the end if the film had any clue. Yeah. But it doesn't. It is quite an OP power, though. Uh, it's incredible. And it kind of... It, it, you know, that's something to think about. Her power just changes everything forever. Like, about the entire world. She has access to, like, any universe at any time. And as Wanda made clear... You can access universe with the kind of technology that can revolutionize your current one. Why don't you? You know what I mean? It's like, um, when we when we pose questions like, "Oh, if you went back in time to uh, when YouTube started, what kind of videos would you make?" It's like, bro, if I went back in time to then, my responsibilities as a human being to let everyone know about all the horrible events that are about to happen and how to prepare for them. It, it, it's almost like the, the weight of that on your shoulders slash brain would be so intense that you'd probably fucking go insane. You're like, do I need to go and try and convince the government that I'm from the future so I can warn them of as many natural disasters that I can maybe remember? Or different mistakes that are made in relation to baby policy as best I can describe them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He has the ability to open up portals to universes with infinite food. So, yeah. After all, it seems to be free in most universes, apparently. I mean, it means she's been to at least one that has infinite food, and she can get there at will. Like, man, yeah. I didn't even think about how much that fucks everything up all over again. None of them have to have to think about that because they're all too stupid. Did I mention Multiverse of Mad is not very good? I don't uh, think so. Yeah, a, lot, like, a lot of people think it's pretty good, but, yeah. Most format wouldn't work with a 10 minute li limit on, on YouTube videos. I'd fucking release parts 1 through 100, it'll be fine. And then when they increase the limit, I'll just, uh, remaster, I guess. Um... 50% of pineapples now contain larger amounts of cocaine. How, if at all, does this change the pineapple on pizza question? Well, you saying guess... pineapples have trace amounts of cocaine? Apparently they contain... 50% of pineapples now have larger amounts of cocaine. That's what they're saying. Oh, it can't be any appreciable amount. I would assume not. So I don't think it changes the question in any way that's meaningful. Uh, have any of you seen uh, the EFAPL Twitter account? And if you have, are you willing to talk to them about their problems with you? Bro, it's fucking Twitter. Which which of the thousands of people do you want me to talk to first? Like, uh, I don't think, I just, I just don't care. It's all right. I think everybody, everyone's got those sorts of things happening as the, as creators. Accounts that are like, they are bad. They do this. Uh, also, genuinely curious if y'all y'all could discuss episode six, DS two shields versus episode nine beacon. Oh, uh, Death Star two shields oh, versus Star. episode nine was, beacon. I was sitting there like episode six Dark Souls two. It's right. Like, 
That was confusing. Um. So the the death the second Death Star shields versus the Episode Nine beacon. I don't know what are we talking about when we say beacon, like the the can't look up shit. The the beacon. Uh, I actually don't know. I don't. Yeah, the only thing that comes to mind would be like the radar dish. They said like the shield projector. Well, the shield projector to... surely couldn't stop the Death Star beam. I don't know. I don't know what, what the question is. They said the, the motherfuckers on Twitter think these are comparable. I, I don't know what we're comparing. I Yeah, I don't know what we're comparing and in what way we're comparing. I, I just don't... I just don't know. Navigation I just don't beacons? Know. Like, yeah, but what... What are we asking? What are we comparing? I don't get it. The thing that tells I'm ships very to go up. Confused. So how does that relate to the Death Star 2's shields? I don't understand. All right then. Doctor Strange <laughs> should have used fluoroantimonic acid. It's up to 20 quintillion times stronger than 100% sulfuric acid. Uh, when? When was he using acid? I can't remember. I don't know if we made a joke about it or something. Oh, we made a joke of, I, well, I did about changing the composition of things at will. Can you just change what's inside you to acid and stuff? Uh, hello, Massives. I'm a huge music guy, and I gotta ask, what are some of your favorite music artists or genres? Well, I like uh, Electric Light Orchestra, and they're probably my favorite band. Uh, I like all kinds of genres. Uh, generally, like hip hop and country, I'm not too keen on, but there's always exceptions. But I, I like all kinds of different things, uh, really. I have very broad tastes when it comes to music and bands and things. I am the same. My preferences, though, would Likewise. lead to an umbrella of metal and down to symphonic metal, which is usually my favorite genre, but I quite like power metal as well. But I'm very much happy to listen to basically any genre. Rags, would modern FPS games be better if kill cams had never been created? I feel the cam has ruined a lot of players to critically think in games. I don't see... You would have to explain what you mean by that. A lot of games don't have kill cams. A lot of them do. One of the reasons that they do is because it assures players that there was a reason behind how they died. Like it explains the story of how they got killed by another player in a scenario. And it also definitely puts a, um, a, a penalty on camping in a spot for a long period of time. Uh, because people will know where you are and they might, they might come back to get you. Uh, and that works kind of both ways in the sense of they know where you are now, so they might come and get you, with my, which might encourage another engagement between your two, essentially a round two between two players. And even though they got you the first time, because you sort of know where they... At the, and there'll be a delay, be it could potentially 10, 15, 20 seconds, or even more, depending on the map and the game, it gets, you know, may, like, it, 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 like, it compels a rematch-ish, you know, quote-unquote, rematch between these players where you can go and get the person who got you. And it sort of has a soft implication that you should be more mobile and not just sit around. But, yeah, I mean, it's it just like, it's just an, this assurance of when you died, this is where they were, and this is what they were doing, and this is how they did it. And you, you don't just randomly die and you have no idea what happened, which has its place in certain games, you know, but in a lot of games, especially to keep a particular speed up uh, and to give that sort of vibe of understanding all the mechanics in the game and what happens, you know, I, I can totally understand it. I'm definitely not going to say that kill cams are a bad thing at all. Um, because I know it happens all the time where if I get killed by someone and they're just sitting someplace or they're sniping in a window or a tower or someplace in the map, then I'll be like, yeah, I'll just, I'm going to go get you. 
I'm gonna, yeah, if you're just going to sit there, then I'm just going to go back and get you. Or I'm just going to swap to a sniper and I'm going to snipe you and then carry on with my day, you know, if that's what you're going to do. Mm. Um, and I expect whenever I kill someone that they've spectated me or, or not spectated, but what they saw what I was doing. So they might have a, um, you know, they, they might have an incentive to come back and get me, which keeps me on my toes and keeps me alert. Yeah, I would need to hear the argument for why it's made everything worse. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is. It would be interesting in, in, in to have it in some games that don't have it. I know that like Daisy is a good example of, of I would be it would be interesting to know sometimes when I die who who is it from? What were they using? Where were they? Like, did I should I have seen them and I didn't or were they legitimately hiding in a particular spot? You know, just things like that. It'd be curious, but I'm, I wouldn't you say it, it should be in that game. But, you know, it it, it would definitely change the dynamic of some games. Uh, and it, it it's generally associated with a more hardcore kind of experience. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it works generally well in games where it is and games where it isn't. It's just another mechanic in games uh, that uh, is there for you to use. Am I the only one that thought the scary parts weren't... What have been talking about? Wanda doing the, the spooky things, like climbing through the gong or whatever. I mean, I recognized it as a spooky thing, but it didn't scare me. I was too busy being upset mm -hmm. to be scared, honestly. Day three of reciting Maxwell's Bloodborne video to get you to watch it. Side note, he has a video on Elden Ring. I don't just love it 3,000, I love it 1.2 billion. Also high racks. Hello. The first Transformers I had to go to Transformers school. Michael Bay, a quote I found while researching for my critique of said movie. You had to go to Transformers school? Does he mean like watch the original show? Or? Maybe he's like an electrician. He has to go to Transformer School. It's no secret that my reviews are entertaining, f entertainment first, so I don't recommend using me as genuine advice. Don't know if that's supposed to be a Bloodborne video quote or not. But okay. Have you heard of Under the Banner of Heaven? It's a true crime show with Andrew Garfield as a detective investigating radical Mormons. Good so far. Oh, I'm I'm just glad he's yeah you know, out there doing work and stuff, and I'm yeah. glad to hear that's good because he's very talented as an actor. Yeah, I've uh, not seen or heard of it. However, most people can't play this game ever because you have to buy a four hundred dollar magical box sold by the wizard Sony in order to experience it. Technically correct. I mean, everyone has to get some magical box to be able to play. Uh. Mm -hmm. Mine is a, a science box, I will have you know. Mm -hmm. It is a box of science. And even then, you get to see it in amazing 30 frames per second with no anti aliasing. Port to PC, I beg of you. Oh, agreed. One thing I did find strange is that Superior Iron Man is nowhere to be found. Why is he not there when making that decision? Do we assume he's dead? Um, well, you can assume anything you want. It's a multiverse, right? Yeah. Uh, remember Could when... He doesn't exist. What was that, sorry? Could assume he doesn't exist. Yeah. Remember when Chavez is covering puddles and stops to peer into one just so that we get a jump scare? Or when they stop running from Wanda in the sewers? Trash. Yeah, kinda. When you literally see people pulled through, pu like, puddles into you god yeah. knows what to be possibly killed, I don't think you get curious enough to look into one of the puddles. Yeah, I ain't doing that. Fuck that. I'm not going over there. I just saw what happened to that dude. I ain't going over there. I'm not dumb. Some, some characters just... They just act like they know they're not going to die. And it bugs me, because they shouldn't know that. Uh, the fact that you guys didn't cover Morbius is proof that Morbius is the best movie of all time. It made 15 more billion dollars. So, Morbius, we, we all secretly watched it. 
I know we agreed that we weren't going to talk about it, but I, I got to be honest with the people. We all saw it, and we thought it was so good. We didn't want. Uh, we, it was just. It was too good. It was one of the most amazing films we ever saw. Perfect plot, incredible characters, insanely compelling pacing. It was a perfect movie. It was more better than anything else we'd ever seen, and we were just we were astounded by it, blown away by it, and we. We just couldn't handle its greatness. We didn't want to go against the grain. You know us. We're a bunch of conformists. And we, we didn't want to We didn't want to be the ones with the huge hot take that Morbius was the... It's, it's, it's the Citizen Kane of uh, superhero movies, really. I just felt like any any comment on it is kind of besmirching it because it buys language that's more beautiful than anything else. Pretty much my position. Oh, we're not talking about it. In fact, you guys. Oh wait, yeah. Bird, dragon, squid, cyclops, German of the day. The Snallygaster, the most horrid and fearsome beast of the American lumber woods. Also, hi, Longo. The Snallygaster. Let's take a look here. In American folklore, the Snallygaster is a bird reptile chimera originating in the superstitions of early German immigrants. Later, combined with the sensationalistic newspaper reports of. The monster. Let me get you a few pictures of the Snallygaster. Hmm. Ooh, he's a. That's a fucking creepy motherfucker. Uh, let me get a good. It's because a lot of these are just small. Uh, let me see if this copies properly. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, it's like. It's got this beak and. Uh, da, da, da. It's got this beak, kind of like Fringy, but different. And it's one massive eye and these tentacles that are all coming out of the mouth, and it's like all like skin. It, ugh. Yeah, it looks uh, it looks nasty. Very friendly. Uh. Beck beware's Pokedex entries from Moon and Sword. Spelt B E W E A R. Yeah, Anakin would hate dry, dry desert. Would fortunate. Why? Why ever would he? Does he not enjoy go kart racing? He prefers pod racing. I think so. Yeah. Is that why? I mean, that would be my theory. So. I mean, that would make the most sense. Um, are, you, are, you, are you giving it a look-see by any chance? Oh, sorry, can you say that one more time? Yeah, uh, is it... What? Be, look up the... Beware is what it's called. The Beware? No, just, just Beware. And they're looking for Beware. the entries from Moon and Sword. Can you give me the spelling for it? B E W E A R. Ah, here we go. Beware, and I got my I got PokemonDB.net. It has all of the uh, Pokedex entries. All right. Um. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, so first off, I'm gonna show you a picture of it. All right. Before, it's very important. This is what it is. Oh, this he's like is a friendly him. bear. He looks like a very wonderful, friendly bear, right? Okay. Yeah. So, here are the Pokedex entries. This, uh, this Pokemon has the habit of hugging its companions. I feel like we've done this one before, though. Many trainers have left this world after their spines were squashed by its hug. That does not sound familiar to me. Um, it waves its hands wildly in intimidation and warning. Life is over for anyone who doesn't run away as fast as possible. Um, again, I ask, why did they write this this way? Is there a reason? Present it. Yeah, um, because it looks like such a cute thing, and then it's like, no, actually, it's one of the most d 
deadly dangerous Pokemon and it'll fucking squeeze you to death and break your spine. And if you see it, you need to run away as fast as possible. You're gonna fucking die. Yeah, run about. Maybe it would be a happy way to go because he's so, he's so chill and cute. Embrace him. Today is Wednesday, May 11th, 2022. 14 days late. Hey, that's one of the best sort of things we've had in a while. 14 days late. Right on time. Uh, 5 hour and 55 minute stream? Thanks, Morla. Are you saying that sarcastically? But like 5 hours and 55 minutes is not a long stream? I think that's what we did for the first Doctor Strange one. Still long. Bastards. Still long. Five hours, is that it? Is that all you can conjure? Instead of wasting money on MOM, Jack Sparrow showed it to me for free. Hey, he's a neat guy. He shows a lot of people movies for free. Sad to say, my favorite childhood book series is getting wokeified in the Disney Plus series, and while fans are wrong to go after actors, the casting is diverse for the sake of diversity. Percy Jackson dead. Is there a Percy Jackson series coming out? I I don't know. I don't know anything about Percy Jackson does, myself, um, but it does, sounds like that it does could activate be... a memory of sorts, but I, I can't remember. I haven't got any more books. details. There, there were books and movies. I never read the books or saw the movies, but I, they were a thing. They were. Hey, uh, hey, crew! If all the crows in the world were replaced by the Pokemon Murkrow and Honchkrow, do you think the world could handle it, or would it be like the Australian ostrich war all over again? I appreciate you all massively. Murkrow and Honchkrow. Yeah. Let me. Take a look. Murkrow. Mur. Oh, Murkrow. And. Okay, copy image. This is a Murkrow. This one seems familiar. And let me go into. Uh, that, that, that evolves into. Surely there's a little button I can press. It's like a broom tail and a witch's hat, kind of. Kind of does, yeah. Maybe it and here's spells. Haunch, Haunch Crow. Hmm. They don't seem intimidating. Yeah, as long as it's chill, humans are gonna be fine with it. Well, let me take a look at the Pokédex. Uh -oh. I'm sure we're gonna get something. Let's go here. Let me PokémonDB.net. Uh, wow. He, yeah, he's he's in gold and silver. That's where it came from. Uh, I will. It it's feared and loathed as the as the alleged bearer of ill fortune. So it's supposed to be like supposedly it brings misfortune like a black cat crossing your path. Um it is believed that seeing this Pokemon at night will bring about ominous occurrences. So okay, now let me look at Haunch Crow. Uh it is merciless by nature. It may uh, da, 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 da. So I guess it has a lot of Murkrow followers that it kind of summons. If the Murkrow, if its Murkrow cronies fail to catch food for it, or if it feels they have betrayed it, it will hunt them down wherever they are and punish them. Oh, that's friendly. I mean, at least it's not doing it to humans, right? Sound. Sounds like it's going to be too busy dealing with all of his minions than doing anything to humans. Yeah, I think that be one of those, it, you'll get a nature documentary about how horrible it is, but nature being nature, you know? It says it idles its time away, grooming itself in its nest. Yeah, it doesn't seem particularly dangerous. I think we will opt to coexist until they make that not yeah. an option. Um, DS2 bad. Yeah, both DS2s are bad. So here's the deal. You can remake the Star Wars sequels and prequels however you wish, but you must include Jar Jar with his dialogue, style, voice, and character intact as a prominent side character in all nine movies. Do you dare? Yeah, why not? That'd be fun. 
Yeah, we can make it work. Even if we can't make him work with all those like restrictions, make everything else work. Because oh, well, remember, he was like a senator and everything. Episode one, Jar Jar is not the only Jar Jar. Yeah, well, that's the thing. We can give him an arc. Surely we'd be allowed to do that. We can, we can de like the prequels would be his rise to thinking he's a hero from this lowly, sort of punished. Uh, I forget the Gungan in, in, in the city who's like a clown and he gets all his opportunities to actually make a difference but then he comes to realize that difference is probably the worst that the uh, universe could have experienced I have to work on that you know right through it but yeah might be up for that start an Arnie movies arc with Conan the Barber watch the remake and then watch Arnie's version if I were Ozzy was if Ozzy was real and why is it not in more Metal Gear Revengeance? We'll see, it's lucky that Fringy's not currently here. That's clearly a question he'd never be able to answer. I have to fumble, you know. But yeah, I mean, we could do an Arnie arc, maybe, of some kind. A couple of movies. Arnie arc. <laughs> did, did you ever see Around the Wheels in 80 Days? The no, I did not. Is that the one with... Jackie Chan? Yeah, Steve Coogan and Jackie Chan. Fucking Ani shows up in it as a cameo. Bizarre, but kind of hilarious. Um. Huh. See anime Fist of the North Star and Jojo Circus. I've heard of Fist of the North Star before. But I've heard of it. That night will age. People saying Multiverse of Madness is broken because Sam Raimi have clearly never seen any of his movies. Aspiring filmmakers study them for a reason. Spider-Man 3 is still a functional movie. What a bizarre defense. Hail. People saying it's broken because Sam Raimi. I don't know anybody saying... If anything, most people are uh, saying that he's responsible for one of the good pieces in that film. To be fair, there's a lot of complimentary visuals that match a lot of the style he's had in other movies, so I'm willing to believe it is him for a lot of it. Uh, but I don't think he managed to fix the writing if he had a hand in it at all. Halloween is Shepherd's Pie, where Mr. Fantastic is spaghetti bolognese. Shad. Um. I'm not sure I fully understand, but I don't necessarily disagree. Why are you always driving that plant when I catch a stream? Because it gives me access to all the special items. Um, if I play as anyone else, I don't get all the, the, the variety. Take your issues with the makers of this game, not I. Uh, Mula quieres unos tacos dos de adobada. Um, B. Very true. Very true. Tengo I mean, cuatro e... de pollo y pasto para el rags y nada para el pajaro verde la fringy. I, I oh, heard fringy's verde green. Fringy. What's, what was that? Verde is, verde is green. Uh, how friendly. And I totally agree with whatever that is that they may have said. Absolutely. I'd watch a video where Maul was sent on a large-scale mission to quietly kill young Force sensitives to think the future Jedi in the Jew future Jedi ranks. It'd be cool. Would be edgy. I don't know. But Fringy, it doesn't matter that Peter Parker lost everything because until that happened, he was still Iron Boy. Uh, right. Okay. Hail chat. Hi rags. Hi! Multiverse of Madness essentially contradicts Infinity War by having Strange use the Darkhold against Thanos. There was another way and it was not addressed why he never considered it. Story paradox. To be fair, we have to assume that he knows what the Darkhold is, but he didn't know where it was. At that point, Agatha Harkness had it. I, I'm, al I'm allowing that to happen. Um, though it probably should have been brought up, I guess, right? I suppose it should have, but they hadn't written that yet. No, and I guess... <laughs> I'm being really good faith, it would be, there is a dark hold, you could use that, but I don't know where it is. Like, do you have any idea where it is? No. Yeah. <laughs> That's it then. 
Do we treat dog rag as white person or minority? Well, I don't think dogs are minorities, are they? There's loads of them. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I never thought about it. I guess it's just not my uh, mentality, you know? It's not really how I see myself, and it's not how I want to be seen by other people. Rags is rags. I am, there's only one of me, and I guess that makes me quite a minority, because I'm the only one, but... Yeah, I just, I just don't really think about myself that way. For more love of him talking to me to sleep every night, I've listened to your Star Wars vids probably a hundred times now. Nice. Oh, glad you have fun. Where's my fucking silver mine? You don't know what this is referencing? Nope. Alright then. You things. Uh, any tips for doing essay response videos? Well, that's the first one. Uh, I, I mean, I'm pretty broad, kind of the stuff we were talking about earlier, I guess. Reapply. They respond. So, yeah. Just uh, try and be clear on what your point's going to be. Make sure all the information you present is relevant to it, and then redraft to see if the earlier portions. You've learned something along the way that needs to be addressed earlier um, and structure it so that it's very easy to follow for those who haven't consumed all the required materials, I guess. Um, how is quality objective if the amount of flaw that makes something bad is subjective? The amount of flaw that makes something bad. That's not necessarily uh, subjective. I mean, that's what, that's what essentially... Uh, like analyzing something objectively and uh, is determining how much bad stuff there is. Um, yeah, like we just try to opt for like percentages, right? Like if if we get to the point where every scene is fucked, it's like, well, this is just catastrophic. But if it's like half and half, like no way home, ish, it's like, well, you know, this is like looks like it's looking to be like there's lots of things to compliment, lots of things not to. We try, like, uh, there's no, we don't actually write it down, tally it up, and percentage it out in terms of, like, time code versus, uh, law impact, or actually, like, create literal strings and threads, and then cut them or stretch them to accord with what we've gotten from the narrative to look at what we end up with or something like that, but, yeah, we just try and do it, so, because, like, when we said what we would give Doctor Strange, I don't know if you guys remember, but, like, I think when... Did somebody say... Oh no, sorry, Halo, right? So, I think... Somebody started with three, right? Somebody gave it a three? Someone uh, said three. Some I said think... two. Yeah, and I... Um, yeah. chat, three. like... I, think said... I saw a chat and they were all gunning for like... From zero to one to two to three. That seemed to be where everyone was at. And to me, that's like... That's indicative of the fact that we're all struggling to see exactly where the number lies from all the references we just had, but we know the region. Yeah, it's the the final score. I mean, a one to ten systems, it's fine for its own little purposes. Just a quick sort of, oh yeah, something out of ten for simplicity's sake. But it's more important to get all of the reasons why something's bad instead of the final score for it. Because I don't even know if there's a real way to determine what the score is at the end. Yeah, it's we really sort of done just... for partial expediency uh, and convenience. Yeah, yeah, that's literally it. It's going to be like the least accurate and least useful thing, but it's the most like straightforward in terms of getting you a uh, perspective. But. The, and as I've said before, I, I don't know what point, I don't think any of us know what point, a movie tilts from being good to bad where the break point is. I don't know if there is one, uh, it's 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 a lot harder to define once you once you get into the four to six region of general you know where does this fall is this a four is this a five is this a six it gets really tough to say but it what's more important is getting all of the details along the way instead of even um, saying at the end is this a good or a bad film uh that's almost just like a as a result of all of these flaws that we found which we do believe to be objectively true therefore where does it sort of settle on a scale of good to bad yeah and, and it's almost to uh put it on put it on our shelf 
and move on. Be like, where does this, where's this going? It's like, it's around here. It'll mostly be remembered that way. It's just a bit of a shorthand, satisfying way to conclude all of the hours of all the references that presumably we would hope you, you got that. And so you can understand what we're looking at. Um, number three, talk about room and the remains of the day. Hi, ragamuffins. Hello. Have I shown those either of those to you, Rags? I've seen card. No. Hmm. What are you bringing? Yeah, I've seen what remains of the day, but I haven't seen room. That's one that we should again to, to make you both watch it. It's very good. Um. But yeah, remains of the day. I think Rags, you you quite like that. I think. Uh, it's one of the my favorite Anthony Hopkins films. Pretty know that you're in for a good bit of acting. Uh, as for us talking about them, probably not going to happen, but I wouldn't rule out a video someday. Um, while I think y'all are right about what WandaVision was going for, I got the impression they were villains at the end. I mean, obviously, right? Monica is the antagonist of the Marvels, right? Is she? No way. I was say, that's the first I've heard of that. No, I'm pretty sure they're just memeing. Well, yeah, so... Um... WandaVision's opinion of Wanda by the end seems representative through Monica. Which is that yeah. she gave up a lot so that these people could have their lives back and they'll never understand that. Which is insane. And I feel bad for whoever wrote it. <laughs> uh, my boys, have any of y'all watched the new show by Alpha Busa? It's the same guys who made TTS. The dialogue is awesome, so if you get a chance to check it out, Aka Fringo. I remember I watching some about. of their uh, text-to-speech stuff for Warhammer, and I I liked it. What I what I read, it does kind of have that kind of snappy dialogue that's well paced, and it's sort of it's really funny. So. Yeah, I can believe you. Hmm. Fair enough. Uh, when I asked about the worst prequel, I meant any media. Ah. I guess that's going to be difficult to answer, because I'm... Uh, off the top of my head, I don't even know how many prequels I'm aware of. Uh, the Thing prequel is probably going to be one of the ones I'd go with, I guess, or at least in the running. What are the For prequels do you guys prequels? think of? Yeah. Hmm. Prequels. Um Captain Marvel, yeah. And Black Widow in a sense. Yeah, I guess. Prometheus. So this is yeah. they're they're saying worst prequels. Yeah. And all the ones I've mentioned I agree that they are they are in the running for worst. I, I don't think was it Rogue One? It's like I don't think Rogue One is on the level of Prometheus, but uh Oh no, it, there's no way, right? I don't think so. I guess we haven't seen it in a while, so maybe. Yeah, I guess, maybe. Burial at sea. I mean, if they count in games, fuck yes. Never played Burial at Sea. All I hear is from you that it's bad. I, if, if ever I was like to make some kind of Bioshock Infinite video, I would actually really, really want you to like record a let's play or stream playing Bur Burial at Sea. Like just to have your commentary on top of everything that happens in that DLC to know what oh you boy. think of it. Same for Fringy. We can all share in the despair. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. That's a good selection, I guess. Alien vs Predator 1 and 2. Are they prequels? I guess they're prequels to the Alien um... movies. Yeah, well, but they're not in the timeline, are they? I don't remember if they argue that they are or not. I fucking... I have no idea. I don't think they have any idea <laughs> when they made uh, it. Yeah. Um, based on the EFAB coverage of Doctor Strange 2, it sounds like Futurama did the multiverse far better than the MCU. I love Futurama. Of course it did. I was going to say, is that even in question? It, it could have been a bad Futurama episode and it would have been better. Mm-hmm. Legion does the mentally distressed hero better. I wouldn't say it's good, but at least it puts some effort and has no Marvel feel to it. 
Uh, oh yeah. I, look at that, I haven't seen it. However, that does not excuse her turn at the beginning of MOM. There are numerous things between the show and the movie that aren't accounted for, thanks. Yeah, agreed. Um, it feels like there were two projects that were vaguely aware of each other's existence, but hadn't talked. Which turns out very likely the case. It's my birthday. Hello, Rags. All are hard. Hello. Happy birthday. Good for you. Congratulations. You did it. Appreciate you all, Mola Hart. So cute and nice. Um, I'd like to remind you all that the Illuminati's motivation to kill Strange is what led to the second civil war in the comics. There was a mutant that could predict the future, and you can guess the rest. Yeah, it was yeah, uh, Minority Report stuff. <laughs> I ended up... Was it, was it, was it with you? From I, we I showed out? you. It was a, uh, like, a guy who did a reading recap of, uh... Of, of Civil War 2. Which I'm still not comfortable with as a format. No, but, I know, I know, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm fully aware of the storyline of Civil War 2. Um, what a fucking disaster. If they tried that in yeah. the movies, there's no way anybody sides with Captain Marvel. Just no way. Of course not, it's, it's a really bad, like, I don't... Uh, I feel like Minority yeah. Report has ended that conversation. Like, this, you, do you really want to yeah. try this again? Like, it doesn't, you can't. <laughs> you can't. Mm -hmm. Well, just the, the, yeah, you would have, it, it's kind of the problem is like, you presented, like, one side is so obviously wrong that it's not a meaningful, like, debate. Well, it's like we were talking when, when we watched Moon Knight, and they had that weird yeah. Yeah. Amat judgment thing. Yeah, you're right. Like, that's, that's Minority, Minority Report, Report well. is always what you say, like, oh, this is like Minority Report. That's the go-to for that thing. Yeah. Um, that really not good thing where people yeah, get that really not good thing. done. Yeah. No one says, oh, like Minority Report in a good way. <laughs> to me, meaning to say, like, that film makes all of the points and it concludes the obvious conclusion. We all agree. It's like, it's over. Yeah, like, it may be not, not as extreme, but if you were like, so one side on Civil War 3 is in favor of slavery, the other one isn't. You're like, do you, why would you even? <laughs> what's, yeah. what's the Tell point? Tell me more. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it was pretty bad. Uh, so I don't think they're going to do, they won't adapt that directly, I don't think, even the MCU. There's no way. I don't even think they'll do it. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if they did a Civil War 2. I just don't know the, uh, they wouldn't call it Civil War 2. It, it, it could be like, it could even be Doctor Strange, uh, you know, Civil War. Like, it could be his movie. It could be one of Spider-Man's. I don't fucking know. It, it, it could just be added into somebody's subtitle. Um, also, really weird that they chose to put Captain Marvel on that side. I don't know. Like, I'm not saying because, because like, character-wise, I don't fucking know where she would land, but... I wouldn't... I don't know who... What heroes I would think would go on that... The Minority Report side, but... Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I just I just had a series of thoughts all at once where I was just like, who the fuck would I put on that side? Who, what what <laughs> superhero would go on that side? It's like, hero yeah, would go there. Uh, so this is this is a four in a row. Watching Doctor Strange 2 was the worst cinema experience I've ever had. Not because of the movie, although it certainly didn't help, but because I was sitting next to a group of consumers. Whilst I disliked the movie early on, sitting next to them was uh, wooing at every single reference and wowing at anything that wasn't just a little bit cool made me dis uh, despise the movie. All their giggling at every yeah. single Marvel quip and laughing at every single joke only made experience exponentially worse and while they were having collective consecutive cooms during the illuminati scene i thought to myself this is why we can't have nice things well yeah because they probably had the exact same reaction to that that they did to no way home they, i don't think they'd see a difference um mm. which is really important because again like use the substantive elements of the characters you're bringing in as opposed to simply going look at them look at them and then characterize them however you want. What we do now. Dude, it's fucking nuts to me that, like, is Michael Waldron the person then that, that is in charge almost of the cameos? Or is it someone else? I have else? no idea. You, Might you, just be Kevin Feige. I was gonna say, I have to imagine it's Kevin Feige. And then at that point, yeah. it's like, so how does that work? I guess Michael would get told 
who's in the scene and what the scene has to be about, maybe, and then he gets to write it? Maybe. God, could you imagine that? Like, every day they update you with what you're allowed to do parameter-wise. Yeah, I mean, and then it's like, okay, so how does this feed into other stories? Are oh, you not allowed to know? It's like, oh, cool. <laughs> Seriously, that's like a, the nightmarish job for a writer. No wonder so many to quit. Like, that way. Why would you ever want yeah. to do that? And the answer is, well, you get a lot of money. It's like, that's true. And yeah, then you get true. opportunities to make other stuff. Yeah, and maybe one day they'll give you a project where you get a little bit more of that freedom. You're actually able to make mm -hmm. something. Doctor Strange 1978, watch when? I didn't even know that existed. Is that like a Marvel thing as well, or is it just coincidentally called Doctor Strange? I have no idea. Hmm. Howdy, long man. Hi, Ragu. Hi. Ringy, can I get a good old fashioned crikey, please? Oh, crikey. Recently, I started rewatching. The Godfather Part 1. I was wondering what you lads think of the trilogy. I am owed second only to Lord of the Rings. I, Muto. Uh, I have never seen any of the Godfather movies. I've only seen the first one. I didn't see two or three. I have the generic opinion. This two are excellent. Third one is garbage judge. Um, but that's what seven. I hear. That's, that's, yeah, so... Um, as for it being the runner-up to like Lord of the Rings for best trilogy, uh, maybe. Quite possibly. I don't know, maybe Indiana Jones could compete, maybe, um... Um... You know when a franchise goes further than a trilogy, is it no longer able to be counted as a trilogy? I guess it'd be like a quadrilogy. But like, could you no then idea. argue, for example, Alien 1, 2, and 3, could that be considered a trilogy even though there's more? Yeah, I suppose. Hmm. I've never thought about it, really. Because that's, like, I don't think anyone ever talks about it that way, but Alien, Aliens, and Alien 3 together, it's like, that's not a bad, that's a pretty high score in Trilogy on an average. Overall, yeah, it is, so. yeah. I guess it's not my humor because I'm an adult. Lol, okay, Rags, care to tell us again about Lake, Lake Titicaca? Oh. <laughs> Lake, Lake Titicaca is great. I love Lake Titicaca. Wreck, G. I did. I did really like your endgame video, though. Oh. Oh, right, thanks. Appreciate it. Hi, Rags. Uh, hi. Is the Multiverse of Madness the final nail in the MCU coffin? Nothing matters anymore because across to infinite multiverses. Yeah. Yeah. Final nail for now. Be another one. <laughs> It'll keep going. Yeah. I'm so excited for Thor: Love and Thunder. Have you seen the trailer for that yet, <laughs> oh. Rags, the new one? I haven't seen the new one. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure it's real, great. Real good. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend a gaming laptop. The heat slash lack of airflow messes it up fast. I spent 1300 on MSI and regret it. Can you make a desktop PC work? You, sorry, you can make a desktop PC work. But... I'm assuming people, when people gun for a laptop, it it's because question. they can't get the desktop readily. This, was this, uh, is this today or was this the other one? Because I think I remember someone asking, like, oh, should I get a Steam Deck? And I think we just said, like, get a, get a, uh, get a, oh, game, right. a well, laptop this, if you want portability. That's probably around about the right time. This was 14 days ago. Right. This is the thing, uh, a Steam Deck, a laptop, or a desktop... They could all be the correct answer depending on your circumstances. Yep, pretty much. We can only do the best we can with the info you give us. Um, is there a Canada Chavez? Nice, there's one for every country. If you could have one non-magic book from fiction, which would it be? One non-magic book from fiction. I don't understand. So, oh, it would have to be... Meaning, like, take a book that's in the universe of that fiction and have it. Yeah, I assume... It can't be magical. Uh, okay. So. I'm thinking that it would be some kind of a book on some scientific thing. Like, here's how you invent this technology, or here's this... Here's how this works. Here's how da-da-da to enable us to use some level of advanced technology um 
Well, unfortunately, <gasps> I have a lame answer. That is the an archive book in Angel that all from heart own that can call upon any book and uh, in their archives and project it. So it should be like on that. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> would that be a magical cool. book? It's not magical. That's technology in that universe. Well, it, oh, okay. as far as I know, it's not magic. But um, maybe they would exclude. I mean, it would be fair to say exclude hyper technology books as well. Hmm. Yeah, I can't think of any specifically. Well, there's a but there's where... got to be universes full of you know universes. All the universes will be full of books. So I would probably want to get one that explains or highlights the way that certain technological advances are done. That has like mathematical formulas and things of that nature, so that we could have you know space travel, <laughs> things of that yeah things of that nature. Bible from the Cars universe. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty be funny. funny oh, that's funny. Oh. Um, the, uh, this suggestion was the Orange Catholic Bible from Dune. Um, this, this is a, this is a couple of fun choices, like the Cars one that was just suggested in terms of just seeing what is written in it. But then there were ones that were just like for the sake of a collector's item. Hmm. Yeah, um, I don't know. Any other suggestions you guys think of? I, I'm just, I'm running dry. I'm yeah, I, I guess my answer isn't anything specific. It's just the general thing that I've mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, just because how useful it would be. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to be sticking with. Because I'm not too familiar with non-magical specific books in fiction off the top of my head. Same. Likewise. Hey, Rags, the fade is real, IRL, called the Astral. The Astral? Well, they said, no. Are we talking about the Astral Plane? Don't rightly know. Uh... Because the fade isn't real, as far as I know. It's just... Not, it's an invention of, yeah, and I don't think the astral plane is real either. I don't, I don't believe in any of the supernatural wumbo jumbo that's out there. Uh, wow. That's yeah, enough. yeah, that's right. That's right. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Okay. Well, um, I, I'm sure that the astral plane had, I, I don't know if it, give me a, the, uh, what Give what happens if I Google what? is the astral plane real? It says yes. <laughs> <laughs> it says yeah. Okay. That's it. There's no links or anything. It's just yes. It brings up. It brings a lot of astral projection stuff, mm -hmm. but that's bullshit. All right then. Hmm. Um, are you guys aware that all Dark Souls games on PC have had their servers shut down because of a major cybersecurity risk discovered in January? Started ES1 and ER after ER and feel like I'm missing out. Um, presumably you can. S oh, like so you can't play them at all then? I, how the hell didn't I hear about this? If that's true. Yeah, I even I think I would have heard about that. That's crazy. I feel like somebody would have told me. Yeah, but um, well that sucks, and um, hopefully that means. It doesn't mean you can't play the game at all, and that it means that the server supporting, like, player uh, interactions is just down. Because at least then you can still play Dark Souls 1, but it sounds like it might be all down, I guess. You can't play them at all online. Okay. That sucks, but, like, at least you can still play them, theoretically, if that's... Uh... I've heard of this attack, I'm not sure. Yeah, like, I, I, it feels weird as fuck that this is the first I'm hearing of it, and this was sent 14 days ago. Uh, uh it, from software uh cyber security was like, let's see it says yeah it says the pvp servers of dark souls three dark souls games have taken yeah cyber attack dark souls 3 2 and remastered the update it will stay offline till the release of El this is from February 17th hmm. 
Um, uh, was that you, you literally actually see uh, a hack take place in Yumfa's No Walking DS3 video. Apparently there's some kind of breach they've got to sort out. Good. Yeah. Um, I would love for these to be real, Lalmol. You really think I need to make these up? I couldn't have made up half this crap if I tried. He's referring to the um, Wings quotes. Some of them. Some of them. Some of them just sound so, so insane. <laughs> and then, um, God damn it, not again. That's the last one. Not exactly sure what they're been about, but that is the end of the, that catch ups, catch ups, catch ups, catch up. Excellent. Whoa. Which, um, that means, I mean, for all intents and purposes, until this stream finishes, this sentence that I'm about to say is true. Rags, Springy, we have completed oh my the God. backlog. It is done. No. Oh, bullshit. I'm don't so lie excited. to me. Don't give <laughs> don't, me hope. Don't give me hope. Don't, don't hope. make a girl a promise she can't keep. Oh, my God. Oh, my. There's no way. I don't. That's actually what a is, relief. That's what really... am I supposed to. God damn. What happens now? What do we do? Well, he pops we over, do. everybody. It was a good we run. We did it. Goodbye. He pops over. We've been over. streaming for three hours. Still there still are messages please. for us. Yeah. <laughs> God, we got today. So no, nah, let's just end it here. Let's. We did it. Let's um, just end it. EFAP's done. We're we're shutting it all down. But for those who are like confused, like no, you haven't. There's loads you haven't done. Um, there are currently, I think, ten EFAP minis that are unlisted on the Moolah channel, ready to be released. That have all of us getting through every last piece of that backlog. And so what will happen is that they will release one per week and eventually they will all be out because we will most of the time, hopefully, do the Super Chats within the same EFAP and thus it won't create a, a catch up once per week. But um, yeah, yeah. kind of insane. Yeah. They're actually caught up with now. That's a little insane actually, yeah. But exciting. Yeah, and you know what? It's exciting for the audience because those 10 have an average of, I think, three to four hours. So you got yourself 30 hours of me bringing in rags, answering questions, <laughs> watching Mario Kart in the background. <laughs> you can have a lot of that. Nothing um, but Mario Kart. So, yeah, um, I suppose now we're going to check out today's messages. Here we go. Hello, you dongles. What's up? Oh, well, we just finished Super Chats, we or at did. least the backlog, uh, so that's kind of exciting. Uh, I still can't quite believe it, Unreal. but, oh, yeah, I just, I don't, what, do, what do we even do with our Wednesdays now? I gotta, oh, yeah, I, I feel lost, this burden of no, freedom. I feel okay, that's, that's all right. <laughs> I feel okay. <laughs> I, I, I think, yeah, I think it's nice. It, it's legit been over a year. Uh, since that backlog began to pile up. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yes, it, 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 we did, we did. Um, also, been watching MK, honestly enjoying it, but I see the issues it has, like the gods being dumb or powers not explained. Oh, uh, sure, I mean, it's not a good movie. Like, <laughs> that's that what it's... Moon Knight? No, Mortal Kombat. Oh. No, he's probably talking about Moon Knight, actually. I, I, <laughs> Wait, oh, I'm I thought yeah, they're referring Knight. to Moon Knight. I think you're right, uh, right? You be this person wouldn't right, have yeah. heard any of the Mortal Kombat discussion yet, so, yeah. Not yet, right, yeah. Whoops. <laughs> um, I'm getting my terrible shows confused in movies. Oh, no. I know, anything but that. Hey all, have you guys seen Burn Notice? If so, what do you think, assuming you remember? Yeah, I've seen it, but I don't remember anything about it. I was gonna say, I don't think I've seen it. TV show about a spy who gets burned. When you're burned, you got nothing. No money, no connection, and something like that. That was the intro. I remember watching the first couple episodes of that one time, and I really liked it. Um, but that I was many, many years ago, so... Watch TV, and then it was on, yeah. Uh... I would simplify it by saying a show with really great ideas and some good execution, but the way we get there is dumb. Also tell Rags to blow nose. I don't know if that came through. It, did, it did slightly, yeah. 
All right. Yeah, okay. I, I blew my. I blew. I. I exhaled through my nostrils. Nice. I gave Someone... it a. a, a ha. <laughs> Someone uploaded yeah. all of Morbius sped up to a one-minute video on Twitter. Now you guys can experience it with much less time commitment. Yeah. I, I remember I scrolled through my Twitter and it came up and it said they'd been taken down. Oh. In a, yeah, in a minute, you'd think that would be so gobbled that it wouldn't matter, but... Uh, I guess, I don't know, theoretically, someone could grab it and just slow it down. <laughs> I guess they'd have no audio, though. It'd just be, like, really crap. Like, it, it would not be a pleasant way to yeah. watch Morbius. Well, uh, I mean, then again, is there, is, is there any way that isn't pleasant to watch Morbius because it's such a goddamn incredible... I haven't seen it, but, like, you know, based on everything I've heard. Oh, yeah. It's, um, there is isn't there is no pain involved in any kind of consumption of yeah. Morbius content. Aloha, Rags. Hi. Favorite StarCraft II unit? Mine is Colossus. Um, The Colossus is definitely up there. I have a, I really like, hmm, because I'm trying to probably, if I had to pick a couple favorites from every race, I would say Marines and Siege Tanks for the Terrans. I really like, oh, I really like Roaches and Hydralisks. Ooh, let's go with Hydralisks and Ravagers. And I really like... Hmm... Immortals and Colossi for the Protoss. Um, I agree. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I agree. Hmm. Today is Wednesday, May 25th, 2022. And... We are on that day. No, we're not. It's 26th. Well, I suppose we are Schrodinger's thing because we both are and aren't. Yeah. The mysteries of Earth. I don't know how it works. It's like magnets, man. It's so stupid and weird. Or tides. Yeah. That's such a great meme. Tides go in, tides what? go out. How you can't explain that? Yeah. <laughs> that is just nice. Tides go in, tides go out. <laughs> Why would he say that? You can't explain the tides. I thought, yeah, because like, the weird thing for me was I thought it was common knowledge that they're affected by the moon, or is that yeah, not? That as far as I know, it is common knowledge. I thought that's it was just the thing you, you learn. learn that shit in school. Like, yeah. yeah, you learn that the tides are caused by primarily the moon. That tides go in and tides go out, and they're like, I, I like the idea that there's a class C. Tide goes in, tide goes out. I who who, who knows? knows? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Well, because his argument would be the god. Maybe you sure can't explain it. Yeah, What's but I mean, interesting. That's where the meme face came from. If you didn't know yes. the, the yeah, the yeah, um, you're talking about yeah, yeah, that because it was. Because the guy, I forget his name, like David was like the Doberman head of the or something? Thing. Yeah. yeah, head of an atheist organization. And his his face upon hearing that was what the meme was. <laughs> yeah. That that became the meme face. It's great because it's such a great reaction. It's like, tide goes in, tide goes out. It's like, where do you start? You can't explain the tides. Like, I'm like what? Why would you say where that? Where do you begin? Why would where you, do you say begin? that? Like, I guess the reason why I find it funny as well is it's like, even if we couldn't explain how the tides work, it's like, well, I'm sure we'll figure it out eventually. We figured out a lot of stuff that we just attributed to, like, yeah, nothing before. That's you know? what you would appeal to. You'd be like, do you know how much stuff we know now that we did not know at some point? Like, Yeah, like, we didn't know. We thought Earth was, like, you know, the center of the solar system and, like, the whole universe. Now we know that it kind of is because everything is kind of at the center of the universe. <laughs> Well, actually, that might be... I don't know if that's true, but we, we know that it's not the center of the solar system, that's for sure. There is a, there is, there is a particularly uh, one-sided trend of things that were once attributed to supernatural uh, explanations have been replaced by we understand the science behind it now. Hmm. Uh, and it seems to be a rate of approximately about 100% at this point. Approximately. So <laughs> it is... Uh, it is... Uh, it isn't supernatural, Rags. It's what did he say in Hill House? Eternatural, I think is how you're supposed to pronounce it when it's like a 
you understand it, it becomes... So until you understand it, you call Preternatural. it... Preternatural? Yeah, I can't remember he said... Steven says it, I... Because, um... She, she asks why, and he says because... Just because we don't know how it works does not mean it's... Uh, so... Or something like that, I don't know. Whenever you have a discussion about what supernatural means, it might be important to define that because some people might use that differently. Oh, no, of course. Uh, I'm kind of memeing. I, so, I'm pretty sure it was like a um, actually moment for him, but I think it was to more so characterize him as someone who believes absolutely no possibility that supernatural shit is existing. Like, yeah, because preternatural here says beyond what is normal or natural. Yeah. But I would say the typical definition of supernatural is not part of the natural world. Yeah, that's yeah, so. Yeah. It's yeah, a it's, way that the world operates, the universe. And, it, and its usage s seems to be at its highest in like the 1800s to 1850s. Interesting. Um, but this says. Uh. Yeah, I, I don't even know. Yeah, it's it's not something you hear often. Can your drags, but can your science explain how the shaman calls down the lightning? Oh no, no, that's just magic. They're they're just magic. That's to the wizards, yeah. Out of curiosity, on the Vader scene where he yells "No!" at Padme's death, how would you guys have done the scene differently? Remove that. He wouldn't have screamed "No" to the heavens. Yeah, yeah. remove that. Yeah, that's, that's a really the good first start. Starting. <laughs> I feel like, oh, let's make it a little less, like, crazy. Maybe he just, like, pulls his way out and then just falls to his knees and that's it. He just falls to his knees, stares at the ground. To be honest with you, like, it's so rushed because you'd think he'd be on the fucking table and then move to, a, like, a gurney, move yeah. to, like, a bed yeah. so he could recover. He wouldn't just immediately start walking around, probably, because he's burned all over. But, if we'll ignore that for the sake of sci-fi, 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 um... Yeah, I, I agree with Fringy. We would, we would likely gun for silence. Absolute silence. Silent. He just falls. Yeah. And maybe not even any music. Maybe let's punctuate this as a very unusual thing in Star Wars where there's, like, no music at all. Yeah, that would be really cool. And, and if you down. don't don't have the Emperor say the thing about Padme, maybe imply that he can feel it. Yeah, like, he just gets out and falls to the ground and even, like, and maybe, we in, maybe, we uh, intercut with her death, and we can easily imply yeah. he's aware. And then we see, yeah, as yeah, she dies, it cuts to him. Yeah. We just see him there in the background, just grinning. He didn't need to say anything. Could even have something. Just don't have him scream to the heavens. With no, all right. And, and and you know, to to have some Lucas camp, then have all that settle down. Empress just like, Vader, are you ready? like immediately storming off something yeah. into the Death Star image that they have so that you could just be like it's it all starts here man mm -hmm. all this shit went bad and oh boy but yeah uh, the the it feels I, I think I can't remember who made this point and it's such a subjective thing but it just feels a little bit weird hearing uh, James Earl Jones say Padme I don't know why maybe it's the sentence not just the word or rather the name um is Padme all right? It's just like it feels strange. Padme, is she safe? It does. Is she all it. right? Like that's something that a, a kid asks a parent after he accidentally injures another kid. <laughs> well, you and, know, and, and one might say like, well, you know, he's, he's not fully Vader yet. He only just got the suit on. It's like, eh, okay, I don't know. Mm. Maybe yeah, it's just it just feels weird. I don't know. No, so no. funny. <laughs> so it's such a bad idea. Oh. it's... It's like a joke. <laughs> it's awful. It's, it's so bad, but it's hilarious. Like, when people pretend that's actually great, though, like, unironically, it's like, guys, come on. No. Because, like, you know the whole, like, destroying everything around him, too? To, like, it all explodes and sparks and the music swelling. It's just like, I don't know. It would be cool to just have it be the... It's just the few sounds, maybe, of the, of the, the rooms just operating... That's it. It's the calm after the storm. Yeah. Like, things were so loud and crazy, and we had that lava fight, and it was yeah. bonkers, and it was nuts, and now it's just, it's all over, and you're in a quiet room, and you've just, this is what you've done. You've got to deal with the weight of your decisions now, and there's nothing dramatic about it. It's just, this is, it's almost like, it's unceremonious. Like, this is your life now. Also, hi, Jay. To which someone... 
Can't I you? see Jay lurking in the chat there, you know, arguing about supernatural. <laughs> because Jay's right, above this world is a flawed concept. Existence encapsulates everything, no matter how grand an entity is. It's part hey, of clouds are above this world. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Well, that, no, they're not. They're in the atmosphere. And I just appreciate the smiles Where on these you? clouds. The, the, the clouds are so clouds. happy in this universe. So <laughs> Look happy. at them go. Pretty appreciate the smiling cool. clouds. <laughs> I've always appreciated the smiling landscapes in Mario Kart Double Dash. It's and the hills? And the games? They the got smiley smile. faces on them too. It's the, just a the happy really world. The really sad part is that when they <laughs> rain, is that like a horrible disintegration, you know? Oh no. Like, I don't think so. No. That just happy just... raindrop falling to the ground. Yeah, yeah. Until they splash and hit the ground and scream. <laughs> no, no, no. They turn into even smaller. They, they, they disappear, but they're still there. Like their spirit I like becomes how a part of a happy hill. Them. The atoms in the Super Mario world have smiles on them. Yeah. Happy protons, atoms. The neutrons yeah. and the electrons. Even the quarks have smiles. <laughs> Maybe he could beat up the Emperor while screaming, Where is she? <laughs> Where is she? Where is Padme? Where is she? <laughs> you wouldn't give her to an ordinary citizen. Yeah, uh, I don't know why you yelled that one. That fucking <laughs> line is so bad, I love it. I feel like it just, his voice deteriorates over the course of that trilogy. <laughs> Starts I feel off sorry for him, because okay. I, I, I remember finding out that it was like, Nolan really wanted it to be that way. I'm sure it really hurt his throat <laughs> to do that. Sid. The fucking yeah. Snyder's putting Batman's just old filter give him on. Just a little it was thing, yeah. Filter's Perfect. awesome. And of well, course Reeves just doing just... Yeah, yeah, a like, normal voice. Just, you, you, you could just, just... Don't do something so cartoony. Just mm -hmm. speak lower. Um, yep. Don't need to go... Do you see the meme. discourse on the film about him having the little white eyes stuff that they usually have in the cartoons? Sorry, the people Ooh, no. on Twitter and stuff. The Batman, the the Reeves Batman in the Batman should have had the little white eyes thing that they do in the comics. Um, remind me, what is the white eyes thing? Usually in cartoons and stuff, Batman will just have white eyes instead of like his eyes through the uh, cowl. Maybe I need to send you a picture. Yeah, I'm I'm having trouble because I'm just like, well, aren't eyes eyes have whites? Uh, don't no, know. just like no pupil or iris or anything. Oh, why would we want it to be that way? I pe because that's often how it is in cartoons. I remember I saw people arguing about it, and um, I'm inclined oh, to say well... that I don't know how well that translates to live action. Deadpool oh, did it right, right, right. I understand now. Sorry. So, um, but Dead yeah, that, so the first obviously you've already brought it up. So the first question is just like, so how do you justify why it would look that way mechanically? And it's like, well, I guess What's he's gonna have to have some kind of screen on on his. Um, something and remember in that woman it looked great when she had the screen on her eyes <laughs> looked awesome um does um i i think the armored batman in bvs has that right or he has blue white eyes oh, okay the glowy blue eyes um well so the thing is that the only one i've seen ever in live action is deadpool's like but his mask is animated and also moon like, knight the... has white eyes yes but like I guess it's not quite like it's kind of like a weird thing where it's not really like eyes. It's um like an eye mask thing on it. Like Spider Man. Well, like the one like I just posted the piece has of uh Batman. A lot of Batman yeah, have yeah. that. But, but again, I, I think it doesn't like. I don't think it. I don't think it makes. I don't know sense, how you translate really. that to real life. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose and there also, are like, ways. The Reeves, but yeah. The Reeves Batman has like big old eye holes. Yeah. Um. And also, like, I, I do like that that's the first film that acknowledges, yeah, he actually has to paint black on his eyes to make that work. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, but, like, I, was, I do like that. Remember, Batman returns when, like, he's talking to Selena, and then he's, he just, when he needs to pull his mask off, there's no black on his eyes anymore. It just yeah, disappears. It's, it's like, yeah. Which, funnily enough, I'm pretty sure I searched out that scene specifically to see if, how noticeable it was, and then I ended up watching that scene. That scene is awesome. It's a great scene. Um, I like Batman Returns. It's, it's, a cool it's movie. kind of unreal that like Tim Burton's control over Batman is, as a lot of people point out, very uh, unfaithful. But um, mm -hmm. but they still admit it's really enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, 
interesting things happen in those movies. I would like to cover them on EFAP Movie someday. That'd be fun. But yeah, uh, fair enough. Uh, I just remember that being a discussion. So. Thoughts on Elden Ring class and subclasses? Um, I'm not the person. I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say, even I'm not really that good to cover this because I mainly did uh, the melee builds, but... I, like, even from my cursory knowledge, like, yeah, I, I've not really got anything interesting to be able to tell you on this one. I need to go look for videos. Thoughts on Vigor? Will you stream another run, Vigor, please? So, I don't even know if this is, um, shocking information, but I don't know that I'm gonna play Elden Ring ever again. Um, and it's not because I don't think it's good, I just don't know... Um, I did a bunch, right? I mean, I, it's a really long game, or what it was for me, and, uh... I had fun, but um, Dark Souls and Bloodborne specifically, those two, man, I can like complete them in under 10 hours for both of them, and I really enjoy that experience, while Elden Ring is more of this broad... Commitment? It could be that, it could also be that I, I actually, looking back, feel that um, the highs are, are too far paced out. It was like a consistent hum of good, while the others are like... Great, terrible, great, terrible sometimes, um, but that's part of the adventure in terms of some mechanical designs or, or certain bosses or whatever, but Elden Ring was just like, this was pretty strong escapism, I guess. So I, I just, um, it's not even a, a matter of the fact that I don't like it, it's just like, I don't see myself picking that back up again, I don't know. I think There's if plenty I of not, games that I really like, but I just don't want to play again. Because I, I was... Thinking about how, like, if I really wanted that experience again, like, to get into a big wide world and just absorb it, I would probably ask you guys which one should I play, not the replay Elden Ring, if that makes sense. Like, I'd probably mm. want to do Breath of the Wild, because like, I haven't done that, so... Or, uh, or a Red Dead game, you know? I, and, and at that point, I just don't know when Elden Ring would fill that slot, I just don't know why it would. Meanwhile, Dark Souls and Bloodborne are, like, easy favorites of mine, of gaming of all time. Um, Elden Ring, uh... I don't know, it just didn't it just didn't get to that point for me. Um I still have a hell of a lot of respect for it in a lot of ways though. Also, yeah, this this question may be better answered by by Metal. He did a shit ton of runs on that game. I do not know. Can y'all make elite noises for like two minutes straight? What <laughs> For two minutes straight? No. I'm not doing it for two minutes, but you, you've got your sound in there. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Those are... Yeah. Wait, I was gonna say, it's I'm trying to think, like, didn't they, I thought they spoke. Or, uh, the um, so the elites will, in Halo 1, that because I know I've just been started replaying it, they'll go like, work, 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 and then, Wah! that's, <laughs> the, those are the kind of sounds they make. There are three elites in terms of the noises they make. There's the Halo 1 elites who make the alien noise and go, oh, to whom, you know, they're yeah. almost Sims-like, right? Um, that's where we get Wart, Wart, Wart from. And then yeah. we have the other, the, we have the, the rest of the, the, the elites, which are either Arbiter, you must go into the thing and capture the thought of And then you have the, dis the very distinctive high-class British man voice. And those are the three... Those are the three elite voices. I was gonna say, I remember the elite voice in Halo Wars was badass as fuck. I don't know who voiced it. Yeah, they right. all the elite. They have, have cool voices. Yeah, like they they sound good. Both the voices sound good, they but one of them just seems. Majestic. Yeah, they sound um, kind of rough and, I guess, voluminous in their voices, uh, well, just, or they the have just this have a, regal uh, presence to them. The elites, yeah, it's you know, I guess it's it's good. the elites have a, a level of um, uh, yeah, elegance almost sophistication, which is funny considering that um, well, I guess it's not funny. I guess it's interesting that they're basically a warrior culture, um, like war the warrior culture is a huge part of the elites, um, just yeah, background. But yeah, the wart wart wart, it's just funny. <laughs> I, uh, I remember I was watching, um, the Oh Brave New World, it was like the Des um, Bungie 20 Years documentary talking about, um, and, like, all those games, and, uh, 
the the guy who did the art for it, he was like he got told he had to make them shinier and brighter and more colorful, and he hated that he had to make that choice. But I mean, it was the correct choice from a gameplay perspective, for sure. Hmm. Signaling very clearly like which elites. Halo is really great when it comes to um that sort of I guess under talked yeah, about part blue, of red game and design. Gold in the original. Yeah, so I think. blue is blue is like the normal. Red is a step up, and gold is the uh, like elite elite, the ones that are really yeah. Hard. They'll sure. have and like the have... energy swords. Um, yeah, and then take a bit uh, more damage. Halo Reach was pretty good in this as well, in terms of it was very clear like the regular elites, then the zealot class, and then um also like the. Uh, the ones that yeah, had, you could tell. had a certain uh, color, like armor set. Yeah, they had the spec scheme. ops, the whole, the fully enclosed helmets. Yeah. Um, it's just the color coding is super helpful. It just communicates immediately, like ah, uh, and I think it makes sense, right? Blue is a softer tone than like blue. Blue is less intimidating, I guess, than red, and gold just immediately indicates a level of prestige. Um. It's really cool, actually, and it's just yeah, it's those things that communicate on a on a on a first glance, like how worried you should be. They did the same thing in three, where you had like the, the different brutes. You'd have like the normal brutes and their little blue color ones, and then the chieftains have these crazy like headwear. Yeah, uh, they, like... they have distinct profiles and looks to them, yeah. so you know. Well, of course, just... you'll probably notice the massive hammer before the <laughs> anything That's else. True, but they, but... they they it... they it just added to their distinctive look you it's can tell all just, it an um, instant yeah communicate to the player as quickly as possible what you need to understand about who you're fighting um super important aspect of game design uh moller and co i agree with you guys that civil war is an astounding film uh my question that i want to ask what do people get wrong the most about zemo's plan saying it makes no sense and any other plot holes they mention uh, the thing that seems to me that's either gotten wrong or just misunderstood is that Zemo's plan is, uh, the whole point of him constructing it is it's ready for variables. Um, well, I, I, every, everything that played out was exactly as he wanted, rather than his plan changes depending on what happens, and we just see one of the possibilities. Yeah, the overall goal, which is something that he was never going to be able to be stopped from doing, was revealing... That uh, Bucky was the one who was used to kill Stark's parents, but he keeps trying to figure out what is the best delivery method for that, and with the most like undeniable information. But if everything was ruined for him and it all went down to shit, he would probably be fine with simply telling Tony that. Um, it's enough to cause strife, especially well, just on top because of the he knows that If he brought it up and then he brought it up to Steve, Steve would tell him the truth. I think that's I think there's a recognition that like that's the kind of person Steve is. He didn't tell him, but he's not gonna lie to his face. Yeah, because um, you know when he says um I didn't know it was him, it's like there's a good yeah, chance that's a little bit of a... that was yeah. true at one point, possibly. But um, come on, you know, that's, like, that's the thing. On. Steve recognizes yeah. like I'm lying. Don't bullshit me. And I can't yeah. lie. Like, yeah. <laughs> well not that he can't lie, but he can't lie here. This is too important. Yeah. Um, um well, it's just, it, I mean, as we can see in the film, right, the plan worked out pretty well for him. The Avengers got absolutely torn apart. Um, or did they? But I, I, or <laughs> I mean, did they, just... yeah, well. Yeah, you know, Infinity War commits to that element, I think. It, it just... does, and then Endgame is like, nah, you know what, no, they're, they're yeah. buddies. No bad blood, no conversation about, hey man, you lied to me, like, for years. Um... I thought we were friends. But like I, I would happily agree that there are contrivances and pieces of his absolutely, plan. Uh, yeah. But uh, I wouldn't consider um, some of the more popular holes in his plan to be holes as opposed to contrivances, and, and it's just important to highlight because the damage difference is significant when. Like, well, a hole is an impossibility. A contrivance is an improbability that sort of comes in to help uh, push the story in the direction that the writers wanted. Yeah, and then. Yep. Uh, there were things about his participation in that film that even if you thought his plan relies on things that are out of his control, there are still several scenes that are incredible, like when mm -hmm. he's with T'Challa, for example. Like That's a great scene. It's, it's so I yeah. guess what I'm trying to say is like when you're judging Zemo's uh, component in the film, it's more than just his plan. You have to look at 
who he is, what his history was, and what does that mean in representation for, for what the film's about and what it means to other characters. Um, because he is... Uh, he's one of many paths that can be taken as a result of trauma to your own loved ones. Tony and T'Challa both take two different paths as well. Mm -hmm. And we see the consequences of that. T'Challa made the right choice, which is just stop. Don't let it destroy you. Yeah. Cycles Rise of violence, unironically. <laughs> Pretty much, except better than The Last of Us 2. Yeah, you can say that. I guess it's also worth remembering, too, that, like, even even putting to one side what Zemo's doing, the Accords themselves are just going to be causing problems for the Avengers no matter what. Yeah, which I think is um, deliberate that he chose to make himself look like Bucky when he, uh... Yes, when to he blow it attack, up. It's, it's, it, just, yeah, it's it causes, an easy way to cause friction. While also putting him in the task force's... Uh, jurisdiction, which means he'll then have a place to get at Bucky as a guarantee. There's there's a couple of layers going on there that I think are really interesting. Like he's uh, Zemo, you know, there you wouldn't be able to deny there's at least one decision he makes in the movie that's pretty fucking smart. Uh, uh, but I would happily argue there's quite a few of them. I like Zemo a lot. Yeah. Uh, animal of the day, the black locust. Am I doing this right? Uh, let's take a look. The blue locust. Spooky. Uh, it's a... It's a plant. Oh. <laughs> it's, a, it's like a tree. <laughs> hmm. So, um, it's, uh, it's this one, which I'm sure I've seen around. I'm guessing that's why they said, am I doing this right? Because they knew that they weren't. They lied. That's Black Locust. Oh, wow. Pretty normal and chill for the name. That's a normal... T I, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, fair enough. Uh, bring Ragu and Frogo to watch you play Metal Gear Rising bosses. Uh, I, mean, I don't need to watch that. <laughs> I was going to say, if, 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 to be fair, if they want to see it, they will be able to. I wouldn't be like, guys, you got to sit in my stream and watch me play the game, okay? <laughs> Metal Gear Rising is, uh, is a short game. You can beat that. I'm pretty sure my second playthrough, I beat that game in like two and a half hours. Wow. It's short. How come they never um, made a sequel to it then? Like, in the spirit of it? I um, I guess there's Konami stuff, right? Issues stemming from that, because that came out in like 2014. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Five was the year after, and that was like the Kojima-Konami split. I see. Platinum has also make a lot of games. Like, they got a lot of games that they've made. Um... They seem to move on to new projects pretty regularly. Um, and I mean, I, I, yeah, I guess the interesting thing, I really like Metal Gear Rising, but I mean, I I would, I would don't know how well it would stand up compared to something like, I guess it's, it's almost unfair, right? Devil May Cry 5 is like, it's a really good game, and it's super deep uh, mechanically uh, in a way that like Metal Gear Rising kind of doesn't come close to. And Metal Gear Rising also has certain gimmicks that are really annoying. Like there's, there's a there's a grapple system where like enemies will grab you and you have to wiggle the left analog stick really quickly. And if you don't, you get hurt. And it's like, man, I hate this. Like, can you not do this, please? <laughs> this is awful. I don't want to have to in the middle of a fight have to quickly wiggle the control stick. I think um, I think that game really gets by on the boss fights being really cool. Uh, it has a charm to it, obviously, hmm. given all the me. And I think um, a sequel would be awesome if, like, there was a sequel that could expand upon the ideas that they've, um, they've, uh, that they had in that game. I think that with more polish and more time, like, another, um, another one would be awesome. <laughs> but hey, I mean, I guess that, yeah, they're busy working on, um, Bayonetta 3, which will be cool. That's been, when they announced that four years ago, <laughs> like, uh... Uh, it's coming. I just giggled because I just read what I'm going to be saying next. Uh, okay. Wings quote. <laughs> All right. Um, so he's reading chat, <laughs> apparently. He reads that. Okay. Someone, I guess, said he'd probably like P in his A. And, he, and apparently Wings says, well, nah, I got hemorrhoids. Why? Why? <laughs> why? Why would you say that? <laughs> That one, for some reason, I fully believe. <laughs> Man. Like, that he would say that. He would be like, oh, of course I would like that. I have hemorrhoids. <laughs> <Just> like, 
like to give an actual reason why you would like that. Than just uh, no. Um, oh man, no way. <laughs> never heard sentient applied to animals until I got into a Facebook discussion on abortion. Okay, uh, sapient just means humanoid. Just say intelligent life. Well, um, well, uh, that's not quite what those words mean, though. <laughs> To be a humanoid, to be intelligent. Like, I guess, it, it sounds like you could attribute a level of sapience to certain animals, like elephants are pretty intelligent, right. problem-solving. They are emotional, they have mem long-term memories, they are they empathetic. Um, dolphins as well. I feel like that, once we reach a point of, like, where you can do, like, legitimate problem-solving, like, long-term strategy... I guess it's complicated, right? Because, um... What does it mean for a, a, a squirrel to bury nuts that they need to have for the winter? It's like, is that long-term planning or is that just instinct working in their favor? Well, yeah, they had one end. Could you bury nut? reduce down yeah. everything that humans do is, is like a form of instinct or something? Like the categories well, get I guess, complicated. I guess, I guess you could. I think at that point, yeah, because it, it's... I guess it's just intelligence is like... It's it's a gradient, you know. It's like a spectrum. It's not it's not like there's a clear line delineating you are now intelligent versus you are not intelligent. Well, there's um, you have instincts, but there's definitely most of the things that you do are going to be forms of intuition and thought processes that you actually think about and consider. Um, um I mean, the majority of things you do are not consciously thought of. Like, the majority of things you do are not things that you think about. Or, uh, when we say think about it, I guess I mean consciously versus uh, subconscious or unconscious. I remember I watched a video the other day that was talking about how, like, alligators and crocodiles are conscious breathers, whereas we're not, we just do it. We do it when we're asleep, but alligators and crocodiles have to think uh, when they breathe. And that it's just, like, like examples. Well, that's beneficial. It's, it's apparently beneficial for crocodiles because, like, for instance, if you're swimming and you... The, the guy in the video gave an example of when you're free diving, people can black out. And when they black out, they just breathe in water and die and drown. Hmm. Whereas, like, as a crocodile, you don't have to worry about that because if you get knocked out, you'll just... Like, it's preferable to not breathe underwater and deal with the lack of oxygen getting to your brain than it is to, like, inhale oh, water busy. and drown yourself. To be fair, uh, uh, ignoring the, the crocodile's portion of that, just like the idea that like, unfortunately for humans, if they black out and fall in the water, they'll die because they'll swallow in the water. It's like, as opposed to not breathing and where they just suffocate pretty quickly anyway. Um, well, well uh, so, I, yeah, but I guess it's, it's that a lack of oxygen to the brain is more survivable than inhaling water. Like, of the two options, if you black out and then come to, it gives you more of a chance, you know, yeah, to I'm be okay the, rather than... Like, you got shot in the head versus shot in the yeah, neck. Yeah, no, I know, I know. Like, well, it's not well, looking good. The, I think the only reason the guy brought it up was to point out that as a crocodile spending so much time in the water, to consciously breathe is a much more valuable attribute than it is for us because we live on... Yeah, because we there's, barely there's spend no, any time in the water, yeah. There's no benefit to us dedicating mental effort to consciously breathing because we never have to worry about not being able to breathe except when we venture into crazier parts of the world. I guess the reason why I brought that up is because it's it's kind of hard to put like a... There are a lot of things that animals do really well that we are just like incapable of doing that are actually pretty cool and interesting. But I mean, how much we attribute value to that in terms of sap, uh, sapience. You know, it's like, it's kind of complicated. And how much of what we do is just stuff that we ascribe value to that isn't really that valuable. Like how reductive do we want to get, you know, that everything that we do as complicated as it may be is about eating pooping, reproducing, and in yeah, ensuring our, like, continued survival within the group, you know? Also, wait, to clarify, because I saw some people talking about it as well, now I'm curious. So, when you say a lack of oxygen to your brain is what kills, would kill you and take longer compared to drowning, isn't it the same way? It's killing you the same way? I don't think so, right? Isn't the isn't the whole point of drowning that there's water in your lungs? Like, and that's, that yeah, that's, just makes it... I assume that the whole thing that's killing you, because the whole reason they can cough that water up if they're given... A chance oh, to do uh, so is, is the, yeah, like, I'm pretty the lack sure of oxygen the same to your brain cause. that's still killing you, yeah. I, yeah, but I guess it would be that you, you've you've now, like, for a, in, a, in a way, significantly diminished your capacity to absorb oxygen because you've got water in your lungs as opposed to no water in your lungs, you know? Like, same cause of death, though. 
Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I, because it's, someone in chat said it, and I'm pretty sure it's right. Drowning is when you breathe in water. That's what drowning is. Um, as opposed to, like, asphyxiation specifically, which is, like, a lack of oxygen to the brain. Yeah, but, um, I guess because obviously the confusion is just water being in your lungs doesn't kill you, right? It's the, it's, no oxygen is getting to your body. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, actually. <laughs> now, like, now I don't know. Um. I mean, I'm kind of curious, because I, I assume that's how it works now, I'm thinking about it. So, the, yeah, according to Wikipedia, it's a type of suffocation induced by the submersion or immersion of the mouth or nose in liquid. Um after yeah dr so well because i think this is the thing after this yeah this would be it after successful resuscitation um drowning victims may experience breathing problems vomiting confusion or unconsciousness um apparently you may not even like if you breathe in the water you could be resuscitated but then you've got the problem of there's water in your lungs and so isn't that like a thing like people can drown hmm. well but not always is, right Are sometimes that water yes, can just stay always. in your lungs and then it's like it's isn't that called like dry drowning or something where like somebody is on land but the water is still in their lungs and then like kills them like it's I'm like sure it's a happens, long term yeah, yeah it's just um, it's where the, the at the very least just... if you haven't breathed it in well i mean there must be an evolutionary advantage for the crocodile right that like it not breathing in water is beneficial yeah yeah that because um, yeah, they're in water enough that that eventually would become Advantageous well, I guess what, for I guess what I'm saying is, I, I, mean, uh, I would presume that, but that doesn't, that doesn't yeah. necessarily follow that you have an aspect. If uh, it must have been evolutionary advantage, uh, uh that's true. Um, maybe you could argue it would have been at some place at some point, but obviously we have things that are uh, unnecessary right now. Yeah, true. Well, that's I guess, well, well, there's yeah. there's uh, there's evolutionary advantage, and there's also things that are just not going to stop you from reproducing right. uh yeah like having an appendix or tail bones things of that nature a lot of vestigial organs they're not going to stop you from reproducing so you just hang on to them oh uh, and whereas someone, they someone in particular said, advantage they, they, i was thinking about this they said water in lungs reduces buoyancy it's like does it make it harder to surface if you've got water in your lungs oh yeah harder probably. harder enough than it would be well i guess that's what i'm saying is it seems like these are the that these are not great alternatives, you know, like one or the other, you're, you're still in a lot of trouble, but one of them just gives you better chances. Well, but, in the context like, of blacking out and falling into water, I still don't know that you're surviving either. Well, sure, but like it's it seems like at, at the very least, if you didn't, if if it meant that you didn't breathe in water, you got better chances. Yeah, if you if you if you could survive for an extra 30, 45, whatever seconds, then and, the chances I, of you being saved would be increased given enough time over enough populations well, which would eventually could potentially what is the context though did they fall out of like an airplane because what if do they, you mean? if they so just to help you understand if if uh, we're going uh -oh. with blackout versus so it's blackout no matter what but on one hand they control their breathing on the other hand they don't and we've decided that if it's automatic, it's going to screw them over at least somewhat compared to the in, in, controlled. In war, however, yeah, yeah. So wait a sec. So if they're in an airplane and they fall out because of a blackout, that means that the asphyxiation's already started for the one that has to control it. If it's automatic yeah, no, no, while they're falling, that's still giving them some air before they hit the water. Well, yeah, that would be the trade-off then. The crocodile's in a lot more trouble if it uh, if it gets blacked out while it's falling out of the plane. Yeah, I guess it would be. Um, I mean, it's well, no, we're just talking right? about humans. I'm not talking about crocodiles. Oh, as a human, I guess it would be. I, isn't there like difficult? That's I guess why humans be don't have that right? crocodiles too. Yeah, because yeah, humans spend more time above. Like they don't spend time on. Yeah, in the. Yeah, above the, water. You know, on, underwater. It was just uh, an interesting thing. I'd never thought about the idea of conscious and unconscious breathing because I just thought everything was unconscious breathing. But I guess it makes sense that if you're a now you're breathing manually. No, you're not. You may think you are, but I'm pretty sure it's still on. I guess you can make yourself breathe manually by just like deciding at this moment. Like <laughs> the second you think you about know, it, I assume it like, almost becomes manual. It's like walking, just... and you're like, "Oh god, I'm a shit walker." <laughs> yeah, like what does it mean to be aware that you're walking, and then to consciously think about you're walking, even yeah. though you were it's doing like, it? I, I consciously before. decide to go over there, but I don't like consciously think about every accurate footstep necessarily. But I guess it, that's it, the point, right? Is, on, yeah. 
what does it what does it even mean for us to actually consciously think about it's like like if i'm sitting here because I'm, I'm drawing something that's like oh yeah consciously think about the drawing most it's like well i'm not thinking about a lot of stuff though while i'm doing this i'm and not thinking about though, my eyes looking at it and you know perceiving that information like that's just happening without my does it count for manual if they're asleep uh, I don't know how crocodiles sleep. I think that was going to be later in the video, but then I stopped watching. I just okay. decided to watch something else. That was what it was about. They asked how crocodiles sleep, or alligators. Um, I have no idea. I couldn't tell you. I don't know. Oh, interesting. Well, because horse sleep while standing. Isn't that their deal? And, like, sharks sleep Well, they do swimming. other things too, but yeah. Well, it's just that there are animals that can continue certain motions and activities while they're... In the same yeah, way I that think we a lot of breathing like while we're bovines asleep, you know? and stuff can sleep yeah. standing up. Something about their leg muscles just can kind well, of I assume, yeah, chill. They just, yeah, they, they maybe it's as simple as um the ones who slept on the ground like got caught by the lions and stuff quicker. So the ones that slept on their feet were able to run away faster. Yeah. Uh, it's horses sleep both ways, so they will they can lay down, but they can ah. also sleep standing up, so they do both. Mm. Um. So, hmm. interesting. Um, the point was that intelligence is kind of hard to quantify because That's attributes that we don't value that much could be really useful to other animals, especially um, when they can't like communicate with us like linguistically. It can be difficult to like determine certain things about critters. You have well, to find yeah. other ways of discovering things. And here's where things get really interesting. I mean, what is it, you know how, I think we talked about it the other day, right? Ants as individuals aren't that impressive, but ants working together achieve really incredible things. It's like, at some point, is it is it worth categorizing like an ant colony as a consciousness in and of itself, that it all moves in, in synchron, uh, you know, like it's all synchronized in a sense. They all know exactly what part they're, in, kind of in the same way that there are aspects of you, parts of you that are like much more, you break them down into smaller components like all of the synapses or i guess all of like the bacteria in you that operate in a certain way all the cells like at what point do we just class something as a consciousness in and of itself you know i think i think at this point we would agree that it's something that's going on in like the brain of an individual entity but um i don't know it depends how broad we want to go I wouldn't want Leon to be an idiot or a coward. Nervous, welcome to Raccoon City with noises. Seriously, that movie stinks. Don't watch it. I could I'm see sure us doing that for fat movies at some point. I guess we're done with the consciousness <laughs> sentient sapiens conversation. Are you done with it? Yeah. I, yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm just wondering. I might interrupt you at any given moment if I think of something else that's interesting. Right. Or maybe not interesting, just something that's, yeah. Okay. Okay. Ban okay. anyone who spoils MGRA to Mola especially. I mean, it's already been spoiled. You already know about Senator Armstrong. I know he exists. I know some of his quotes. <laughs> I know he yeah. exists. <laughs> you, that's true. If you don't know the context, you yeah, that's all right. You'll, you'll be okay. At Mola, to be fair, a shoe can tell you a lot based on its condition. Environmental storytelling, I suppose. So its story wouldn't necessarily be a 0 out of 10. I guess... I, what I'm talking about is a shoe is not an account of a series of events, but I suppose maybe you could try and drive that definition into judging pieces of the shoe to draw what events it may have been through, but I don't know if that's expanding way too far to the point where it's considered something else. Dude, your body is not made up of different individuals. It's a chain reaction of things. Did I say that the body was made up of individuals? Osmosis or did I say it was made up of components? Stringy. Well, wait, so like, help me out. Is like a, what is, like a red blood cell, like, what is that? Is that like an organism? Or is that just like a, like, cell? I don't think it class, I don't think it's classified as an organism. Well, I guess the problem is, isn't bacteria an organism? And aren't there like single cell bacteria? I think so, but I don't think all single cells in Well, are... that's what I'm asking. Like, is yeah, I... like what what does it mean for your cells? Like, what because cells have processes that run and, and operate all on their own, independent of your brain, seemingly. It's a blood it's like... cell and organism. So this says, um, it's a cell that has no nucleus. So is are we is like a nucleus that we're uh. So, okay, so someone says cells, uh, organ cells, organ, organism. Um, 
your cells can't reproduce, right? Okay. What what does it mean? Doesn't don't like cells like duplicate and replace themselves, or is it that they get replaced by like a new thing? I, I guess I'm. Uh, I don't not because I don't think blood makes blood cells. I thought like bone marrow is where blood cells. Some certain the like is where the DNA is. Okay. I'm just I, asking. I'm not, like I don't I don't yeah, have an answer. I don't remember you. a lot of this stuff. I didn't either. do biology. I, I, I learned it once upon a dream years and years ago, but I can't remember a lot of the details on like what their classifications are. Because I think blood is both like it's a fluid and a tissue because it's cells that are suspended in the plasma and it's something. And I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. I, according to Wikipedia, a cell is a basic structural and functional unit of life forms. It's like. Okay, I don't know if that gets me closer. I guess that's what I'm saying, though. Like, if, if We would count them as being alive, though, right? Because if not, then we would just be saying that we are made up of many dead things that somehow create something that we would consider to be a living thing. Like, a cell is alive, right? At least in terms of the definition of, like, an active or... An active, like, organic thing. You know, your cells die. So, like, a cell is alive, but I guess we wouldn't categorize it in the... No, cells are not alive. Are they not... Surely they're what does alive. What mean to have dead cells then? I thought that when you have cells that like die, they like what do we when we say that they're dead? What does that mean? I think I think they're alive. I'm not saying that right? they're conscious. I'm just saying like, are they alive? Like, yeah, because plants are alive and not conscious. Well, because we'd refer to it as life, yeah. surely. Well, uh, and someone's pointed out, yeah, but atoms aren't alive either, so we're made up of dead things. That's kind of the point I'm getting at. It's like I'm I'm just curious about the distinctions. That's all. Yeah, eventually a collection of things comes together that is not alive. That's, that's kind of the point I was making about alive. ants. They're they're all like little individual living things that come together to create something really cool that's much bigger than what they are. Um, see, everybody's saying they are alive. So why did that one person say that they're not? Who was I that? Don't know. Explain yourself. Why did you say that? Oh, I don't, I don't know. Damn. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I'm just saying, like, as far as I was aware, I thought cells were alive. The fact that they're living and, like, that I hope they, they can are. be alive and dead. Um, Maybe those are just colloquial terms. Okay. Pixels have to be alive, right? Because how else do you explain dead pixels? Ooh! Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess you got them. They're alive. There's just there's a lot of them, you like ants in the colony, and they're yeah. all working together to create I'm this great yeah, thing. Glad someone brought up Plants Ascension. Isn't there like a forest where all of the trees are connected? Like all of the trees are connected through some like underground network, and um, and there's like a an interesting. I I'm not. I, damn, I can't remember. I just remember that they're all connected, and whatever that means, I don't know. Uh, ain't there a curse Gazak for your own life? Yes, but I mean, I don't remember it super well. I'm sure they did talk about it. Because I talked about, like, entropy, right? The universe wants everything to be dead. Like, things that are alive are kind of defying the natural order of things in the universe. That's why so many things in the universe will kill you. It's because the universe wants to be doing nothing. Entropy. Everything is breaking down. Not well, nothing. Huh? Everything... It, it wants to do nothing. And therefore the is breaking everything be down. The universe when things are active and happening, like, that's kind of, like, defies what the universe enforces, in a sense, with its, like, core rules. I think kind the universe why, like, as a whole is universe, moving towards you know? a lower energy state. Yeah, pretty much. So that's the reason why heat death is, like, the... Or, or like, heat death is... Because, like, the universe just, like, doesn't... W I know that it doesn't want anything as in, like, it chooses stuff. It's just that the way that the universe works, it's, yeah, like, I would just stuff recommend that... certainly keep the word want out of there. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I know, I, I, I know what you mean, Fringy, in terms what, of What I mean is that, yeah. yeah, I, well, it depends on how, uh, I guess. Yeah, like, water wants to go words. downhill, it's like, yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly, it's like, water doesn't want anything, it just does that, it's just, isn't that, this is, this is an existentialism, this is science, <laughs> which I don't remember much of, because I didn't do, I didn't do biology, I did physics, and I don't even remember a whole lot of physics. Entropy is the scientific concept as well as measurable physical property that is most commonly associated with a state of disorder, randomness, or uncertainty. The term uh, and the concept are used in diverse fields from classical thermodynamics where it was first recognized to the microscopic description of nature in statistical physics 
and to the principles of information theory. Information theory is the idea that, like, information can't be destroyed, right? It can only be transferred into different, like, things. So it's the reason why black holes are kind of interesting. Well, I think it's the... I, I remember Kurz... I'm just going to keep citing Kurz, because I... What do you mean energy? Video talk, um... Yeah, I know that it's energy, but it's, I think it's also, like, information as well, I think. But I'm not, I can't remember exactly how they classed information. I know that it's matter cannot be destroyed, it can only be changed. So, like, the universe, you can't create or destroy, like, all the matter has always existed all the time. Um, it just exists in a different form. So, like, even black holes, or, like, don't black holes complicate it because it's, like, that is crushed into, like, a singularity that's, like, infinitesimally, it's, like, small, it's minuscule. And, um, it's, like, inaccessible. Damn, I can't remember. I, I can't remember. It's... I can't remember what that video <laughs> went over. Um... Matter can be destroyed if it comes into contact with antimatter. Ah, so that's even more, like, <laughs> stuff. I remember... Matter and antimatter, yeah. Oh well, I uh, yeah, I <laughs> that's that's the end of the the thought. I got nowhere else to go with it. Science. Let's continue with the the super chats. Carl Urban Dread was better. That's, I, I don't think it's going to be controversial to assume that that was better than the fucking Stallone one. It's okay. Don't worry about it. What are you talking about? I I am the law. You betrayed the law. Yeah. You betrayed the law. Have any of you watched the channel Vile Eye before? He does great character analysis on evil baddies in film and literature. Um, I have not I've watched not. him. That was neat. Uh, why use Chris Evans when Patrick Warburton exists? Oh, for a... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean... That would be a pick I would actually understand better, because Chris Evans seems like a pick of just... He's a name, he can sell it. Hero man. He can be generic hero man. I got through all of Steven Universe but couldn't get past episode 3 of Halo. I never thought I would have more tolerance for something I hate than a show based on my favorite game franchise. Oh. It happens. As someone who's finished Halo Infinite, along with Metal, it literally feels like it was duct taped together to make sense of everything. I wouldn't know, I haven't played I don't hear good things about Halo Infinite, nor its campaign at this point, to be honest with you. Yeah. Nobody talks about Halo Infinite anymore. They they screwed it up. Mm-hmm. Ringy, I want to argue with you. Fight me, you green man. Why did... No, come on. They didn't even say what they wanted to fight about. They just said a fight. Imagine Dragons is good for Spider-Man Miles Morales. Um, I can't remember. Is there Imagine Dragon songs in Enter the Spider-Verse or maybe the PS4 game? Or uh, I don't know. Maybe in the PS4 game. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. Well, someone knows. How's Lone Wolves? Not great. <laughs> it's not good. Uh, uh, are you actually drunk when you slur in your videos? I don't know if that's directed at Brinker? Or one of us? Hmm. I, I typically uh, don't. I don't slur in my so. videos. Not sure who you're asking. Rags, prove you're not racist by saying the n-word backwards five times. It undoes the racism. Ah. Uh, oh no. Oh, let's see. You're not. Right. You're not. Good. No, you're doing yeah. it though. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, but crew. then I'll be racist forever. Remember the you Pokemon turned them against me. Executor? You should check out Alolan Executor from Gen 7. It's a dragon now. Ooh. That's the final evolution for all Pokemon is to become a dragon at some point. The variation. Um Because he's the he's the boy, there's three eggs. Oh wait, was it three eggs and then he turns into three eggs on like a palm tree person? Eggs are, that's the eggs one, yeah. yeah. Eggs are... He becomes a dragon now, apparently, in Gen 7. Oh, because they did those crazy new evolution types for a lot of them, didn't they? 
Wings quote of the day. I don't give a fuck about oh, people yes. who want to wish me goodwill. I don't, because goodwill's <laughs> worth nothing. I can't take Arian Foster's love and make a house payment with it. Yay, some guy I've never I... met and will never talk to says he loves me. Who gives a fuck? I, uh, I remember seeing that one in, like, a montage thing. It's kind of funny because there's a level of truth to it as an observation. Like, Goodwill isn't going to pay his rent, but at the same time, it's like, I mean, dude. I don't think anyone kind of ever know. intended it to do that. That's not why people no, give each other you, Goodwill. They just, <laughs> no, they just want you to feel better in the hopes that you feeling better will, like, help you. You know, that's yeah. it. I don't know. It's, it's funny to get mad at Goodwill, I guess. It's like, yeah, I don't care about Goodwill. Like, I want donations, you know? I need donation subscribers. I think that's what he basically said afterward. It's it's one of the reasons why he says, like, if you don't subscribe, like, I'm bad at you at some stages, I think. Jeez. You that know, just, he just... Uh, well, it's just... I know, it doesn't like a, really... A, it's even like... A uh, recipe for success, yeah. I suppose if you were to, to be super pragmatic, you'd be like, Wings, this is gonna endgame be worse for you. Same for, like, DSP. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all right. Um, where are we? Bonus. Uh, that reminds me, I need to ban the word thoughts. That's, that's brain like, banned thoughts long. I need to ban the word go. thoughts. I mean, it, it, that's good news, I guess, if you're at that point. Ban. Man. Double bonus. <laughs> Could I take Boogie in boxing? First round dog, very first round. I'm not only in better shape than Boogie, I'm more athletic and younger. Um, I get, hmm. I, I, genuinely, if you just drop him simulation style into like a ring, who would win out of those two fights to the death? I think I would put money on wings. I don't know who I would put. I mean, he's got a lot of practice. He's got a lot of muscle like in his arms from throwing his controller across the room. Well, he did that weird training course for a little bit with uh, PKA and he's a I lot younger. That Boogie's, oh yeah, I think that's a big advantage is, yeah, Boogie, uh, Boogie's like nearly 50, isn't he? Yes. Man. He, uh, yeah. isn't he now, like, to, uh, to, for, like, some sort of fight between YouTubers? He's, um, I think that's all bullshit. He's, he's trying to encourage the idea that he would do it, but I don't, I don't believe for a second. It's not even, like, a matter of, I don't believe he has the courage to do it. It's more so just, like, you'd have to be fucking nuts, like, at your stage in life, at going to do a boxing age. match. Yeah. I. <laughs> just, that's funny to me, Boogie the Wings getting into a fight in the ring. The biggest loser. <laughs> I mean, if they were to organize it, I think people would pay to watch that. Just saying. I think. I, I feel like it would be more so for Wings than Boogie at this point, though. You know? I feel like I feel like Wings' level of popularity is is uh, higher than Boogie's. Like, Bo Boogie's fostered a, a huge level of contempt against him, whereas, like, Wings has that, but like Wings is a very entertaining. It's almost like that's why character. people like him. He's yeah, got where an endearing people, factor. Um, I think maybe it's the fact that um Wings like never really had a reputation for being like the greatest, most wholesome, awesome guy. No. Like he never had that. People liked him before, but like he never had that. Whereas Boogie had that and has descended so far from that reputation he cultivated that there's a, a level of maybe contempt against him more so than than Wings. And I, I guess also there's like a, yeah, I'm not sure. Like, it, in a certain sense, Wings is a bit more of an underdog, <laughs> you know? It like skyrockets his career after that, and Boogie's gets worse somehow. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, that's the bonus quote. Uh, oh wait, yeah, that was a double bonus. <laughs> Here's some good news. The developers for the Stalker games and their families have relocated from Ukraine and Stalker 2 has resumed development. Oh. That's good. Do they're safe. And then someone said the prophesized time is upon us and I think that's when I, we first talked about how all the super chats caught up with but we're getting to being oh, yeah. super duper complete. Yay. Me. God damn it. Not again. Mola. The backlog is now complete. Me. Peepo. Yay. Never mind. I'm good now. Oh, yeah, because sometimes I don't get to his messages, but we've got them all now. And even the ones that you haven't heard us answer yet, they're out there in the ether, waiting to be revealed onto mute. Um, Mola, the Super Chat backlog is defeated. EFAP 200 stands menacingly on the horizon. Yeah, a little bit. Um, 
because that will that automatically creates a backlog for us uh the anniversary stream. and we are three months away from anniversary oh wow that's insane <laughs> man that came around super oh, fast man. never should have started the expectation that we would do a really long stream um <laughs> Once a year's not so bad. Oh god, it's been a year already. Yep. Shiba dog squeezing a big red heart. Oh. Mmm. Oh cute. That sounds nice. Just started watching Breaking Bad for the first time. Five episodes in, and I'm really liking it. Don't you mind that? That first episode is enough to hook the fuck out of most people, I think. Such a premise. Hello, Fringo. Hey. Um, hello. Hello. And Rago. Hi. Which do you think would win? The Flood from Halo or the X Parasites from Metroid? I do not know enough about the Metroid Parasites to be uh, able to say. Uh, hmm. I don't know. I actually don't know. Um. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Uh... The Dark Knight line. I'm not wearing hockey pads. It's always bugged me because the prior question to that is a good one, but is waved off with that. Oh, the fact that he says, what's the difference between you and me? So I suppose Batman's argument is that I am I have the equipment needed to do the job that I'm performing, while you do not. You have hockey pads. Um, That's sort of like I what I understand it to mean, but I still don't like that answer. Not a great answer, um, because it's this spirit that the guy is appealing to of yeah. fighting back for your city against crime and Batman's not really addressing yeah, so that. If I, if I get good equipment I can do it like you? Which is definitely not what Batman would say. <laughs> you would be yeah, like, no, 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 still don't. But yeah, no, I agree with that actually, yeah, that's fair. Um, hey, I'm the Wings quote guy. What the fuck? Ban that guy. Fight, <laughs> hey, fight, fight. We welcome all the Wings quotes, okay? Uh, you forget playing Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Let's get Mola to play the DMC series, including Devil May Cry DMC. Or oh, DMC, yeah. Devil May Cry, Devil May Cry, right. Uh, it would be glorious. I'm up, I'm up for that. It has a good reputation, that series, right? The series overall does. Um, two, two is not considered good, <laughs> though. I haven't played that. Okay. Well, I haven't played the first one either, or, yeah. I go away for a year. Now Mola has a fairy adjacent icon. No, it's a cute animal. Fairies don't get to have. It says it's that's all right. That's how it all starts out. It's all right. Nope. It's fine. That's fine. I think it's I think it's wonderful. What what critter is it? Um, funnily a enough, ferret or like a little. It's a uh, uh, Fringy was trying to guess it the other day, and I was like. I'm pretty sure the name of it is something I'm unfamiliar with, so it's, I don't think it's a ferret. It was um it was done on a stream with Adam and Sitch and Duma, um because someone I think suggested he I think he said like an animal that he felt was his spirit animal or something, and then they made like a version of this animal a stoat. That's probably what it is. Oh, that's great! Yeah, stoat, little stoat. Uh, you, GG rags convert them all? No. Yes. Gonna... I listened to Imagine Dragons separately. Ahoo! Oh, I guess they're just saying that Imagine Dragons matches up. Hmm? Uh, Digimon of the day. We already had, we can't have several of the day. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, Troopmon, aka Mauler's champion. This. Oh, he's got like a little gas mask kind of thing. And he's a little bit kind of eerie in terms of like what what's what's his deal? Wait, does he have a? Oh yeah, because they all have guns in Digimon, don't they? What he looks like? The Digimon. Huh. <laughs> it like, gives you different vibes, doesn't it? Look into that. It does yeah. But, all right, fair enough. Ripple bonus. It's $100 to turn the webcam back on. No, I'm not charging for the webcam. It's a perk. 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the the webcam is a perk. That's apparently from three days ago. What's funny about that is I could actually see that working. Like people being like, I don't fucking watch wigs without his webcam on. Yeah, I want to see his fat ass in the little boxer. I want to see his face when he gets super angry. And if he throws something, you won't be able to see where it goes. Fun fact, an anagram for Imagine Dragons is Gonad Migraines. Wow. Sounds uncomfortable. And uh, with that one read, that is the official 100% end of all Super Chats Whoa! having been sent in. We have answered yeah! every single one of them now. Wow. Yeah. Woohoo! Guys, it only took several decades. There's already another one, but that's fine. Uh, we we, yeah. we uh, yeah. finally, finally, finally actually got it. There's another two? Jesus. Okay. Favorite game movie mm. adaptation besides Arcane? Hmm. What do we? I don't even remember what we answered that question with back in the day, you know? Like, before Arcane existed, what did we even say? I don't know. Um. Yeah, help us out. What are the, uh. What are the, what are the ones that are okay? Because I don't think there's going to be any good ones. Doom Annihilation. Sonic? I mean, it's probably uh, a higher score man, than yeah, the I guess. Oh, Castlevania, I, I hear. The first two seasons are apparently very, very good. I like I liked the first season, a couple of seasons of Castlevania. I didn't watch past that, and it sounds like I lucked out by doing so. Yeah. That's, that's probably it. I remember people saying the Silent Hill movies aren't, like, hideously awful or anything. They're, like, one of them is okay, I think. Right. So, yeah. There you go. Um... But there are still more Super Chats. You're a liar. Not for long. Hey, Rags, which SE2 Hi. campaign is your favorite? I've only played uh, the first one through, as I said, so. It will never be over, and you know it. Also, Coom. That, again, is the last one. Which Excellent. means, at a nice rounded four hours exactly, that, that puts uh, the three of us, we are, we are completely caught up, and so it'll be up for Saturday to put us back again. I have a feeling it's probably going to be a really long podcast getting covered on the day. And that means, mm -hmm. ladies and folk and gentle peeps, that we're going to try and actually get a meme fap or two recorded. And... Um, yeah, I guess that's because there's no reason not to mention what the schedule will be looking like as we go along now. So, Saturday, everything everywhere all at once. We've got two guests. So, uh, I guess I would recommend watching that film before co seeing our coverage. But if you're not convinced by a simple recommendation, maybe you will be by the coverage. Same sort of rules as usual. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the following Saturday will be a premiere of an EFAP. Because uh, we will not be available the way that we usually are. And so we've prepared yep. a fap for you guys. And that one has the other half of the Doctor Strange catch-up, catch-up, catch-up in it. Uh, so there's like a bit of a Super Chat Q&A thing at the end of that one as well. And then the week after that will likely be a meme fap. You get into two non-live EFAPs in a row... And that's because lots of IRL things is going on, but uh, all good. You'll be okay. You'll be fine. I'll even try and fit in some gaming streams here and there. Not sure. Oh boy. Uh, and then of course you'll still have real BBC and open bar will pop up as well. And uh, Cosmoronic presumably will will. Yeah, I'll try and get an episode again next week. Uh, whatever everyone, everyone else is up to and whatever ways they be doing the the boom. Uh. How much longer can I do this? Don't worry. Not much, because we're going to be saying goodbye very soon. Are we blind? Deploy the Super Chats. You can't stop us now. We're, we're, we're almost <laughs> we're free. Just, we're just smashing through, yeah. Oh, the Ratchet and Clank movie. That's literally just the game cutscenes with nothing added was a thing, too. Yeah, it's, I'm, I hear it's terrible. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. like, absolutely awful. And I'm sure I would hate it if I watched it. Um... That one might make me angry, <laughs> legitimately. Jeez. Well, 
on that note, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, the only other thing to mention is that Kenobi is happening. It is on the way, and it's oh uh, yeah, so episode good, premiere this. Genuinely so. good timing that um we're done with catching up yeah. on the backlog with Kenobi on the way because yeah, things are about to get a little more complicated with Wick. Um, but that's another reason why different things are happening. So yeah, look forward to that. I hope you all have a wonderful night, and uh, thank you so much for the very generous donations. And again, sorry to everybody who it took so long to get to them, and just keep an eye on Mooler. All the different catch-ups will be coming out, and they'll be properly labeled. Yeah. Um, how old are y'all? Hi, Rags. Kisses. Hi! Um, well... Classified. I mean, yes, I don't I don't think I care that much. And and besides, my handle for a while was Mooler93. <laughs> You may be able to gather why I chose that that number. Um, but yeah, that's about that. Did any of you guys want to say anything? Before we leave? No. Man, that was a very enthusiastic no. You're ready to go to sleep, aren't you? Me? Or no, play but video it's so, games. so I'm so so. so what what does so I so mean? I'm I'm like I'm not really tired. I could lay down, but if I didn't, that would be okay. I'll probably right. just I don't know what I'll do. I might eat. I have some whiting in the freezer that I could give a try. I've never had whiting before. Moller, I think people are confused. You're 93 years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Permanently. Permanently 93 years old every year. The, the birth date moves back. <laughs> <laughs> He's possibly over 100 by now. <laughs> yep. I mean, I am a bit of a boomer. Um, alrighty then. It's been fun, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. See you mm -hmm. for Saturday, where we're going to talk about a movie that was pretty neat. Yes, yeah. it was. Goodbye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. Toodaloo. Bye. bye, -bye.